people over the atmosphere we declare that the enemy can do nothing about this gathering in the name of jesus this is the gathering of the saints of the lord and we pray the presence of the lord in this place in the name of jesus every section of this program oh god we pray that father let it be blessed in the name of jesus we pray for the others who are coming, oh God, those who are driving, those who are walking. We pray that nothing shall hinder, oh God. They are coming to this place in the name of Jesus. Father, make a way for them, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank and bless you. We pray, oh, dedicating and committing the entire program into your hands in the name of God the Father in the name of God the Son in the name of God the Holy Spirit we bless and thank you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth we give you praise we glorify your name we call it done in Jesus name somebody say a big amen oh somebody say a big amen if you are happy to be here this morning please put your hands together unto the Lord hallelujah praise the name of the lord please be seated and so straight away we want to uh invite bishop to come and take over and then he will take us through what we are supposed to know let's put our hands together for bishop olumide manuel thank you sir okay you're all welcome to school of money we want to thank um cm for opening their door for us to do this and uh, be a blessing um, so you're all welcome. We want to try as much as possible to ensure that we stay within the three hours that we have planned. And then we also ensure that we really give value and maximize time. So we're going to be having three sessions and a short break. Three sessions and a short break. Um, we have a lot of materials that we have released over the years on wealth creation. Um, my first book that I wrote on wealth creation is The Pathway to Wealth. It's available um, for everyone to get their copy. And then the main book that I've written on wealth creation is called The School of Money. This is now known as the Bible of Wealth Creation. It's a book that teaches you how to make, manage, and multiply your money. And my latest book, that was released exactly one month ago. Today makes it one month. It was released on the 3rd of January. It's called How to Create Wealth as a Career Person. The Intrapreneur's Guide to the World Place. And this meeting is our launch of this product in Ghana. So everyone needs to get a copy of one, two, or all of the materials. We have also come out with a new pack which is our updated world creation master pack and all the three books are in here along with my other world creation books so every book i've written on world creation is here and then we have 26 audio programs all in this pack so when you are getting this pack you are getting it for everything here is somewhere around 4000 ghana cities but you are getting it for just a thousand why? Because all the books itself is like 1,000 Ghana cities, and the books are there. How to um, um, bridging the gap between the rich and the poor is here. 50 common money mistakes is here. So almost everything you need to know about wealth creation are all covered in here. So let's. Uh, so please, once once we want to start putting, let them start from the front like that, and then they start from that back there, so that we have. It's not. We don't want to have empty seats in front. So. So please, you guys, it's either you join this place or you start from the front. So you can start from the front here. So thank you. So, so that we can have... Um, so I'm going to start with session one. Session one will take us about 30 to 45 minutes maximum. And then we'll take a break so that you can go and get the materials. And then we'll now go to the session two, which is where I'm going to share with us on what I consider to be the engine room that will help you to become wealthy. Then, we'll now have the third session, which is a question and answer session. 
and um, then we'll just wrap up with an impartation prayer session. So if you have any question whatsoever, feel free to note the questions. We're trusting that your questions will be answered today. So let's start with, um, so if you buy any of the books, How to Create Wealth as a Career Person, this financial intelligence test is inside. School of Money, this financial intelligence test is inside. But because we want everybody to partake of this, whether you buy the book or not, that's why we are doing this. So let's all bring this out. I believe you must have gotten this. So this is the first session. We are going through what I call the personal financial diagnosis. Personal financial diagnosis. And that's what we want to start this morning. So financial intelligence test asks 26 questions. And these 26 questions are questions that will help you to know where you are financially because many times a lot of us are not able to change our financial situation because it's difficult for us to be able to identify where we are in order to successfully navigate our way to the world place if you want to buy a ticket now from any airline and you ask them how much is a ticket to london or a ticket to south africa they can never answer that question without asking you a question. From where? There is no way they can tell you the cost of a flight to a destination without doing your takeoff point. There is no way. They must know your takeoff point in order to be able to tell you what it will cost you to get to where you need to get to. So many times, people don't understand this simple thing I've just said. So they think that, oh, he's my age mate. Uh, we grew up together. We went to the same school. Mm -mm. We, nobody is your mate. You are in a class all by yourself. And your status is not somebody else's status. Your present position is not somebody else's present position. So you need to know exactly where you are so that you will have data and facts to help you make the decision that needs to be made. And that's what this will do. So let's get ready. So I'm just going to run you through the 26 questions. And then you have three answer options option one is yes option two is no option three is i don't know option one is yes option two is no option three is i don't know so let's start so question one do you know your present financial condition or net worth that means if i'm to ask you now how much are you worth now can you tell me exactly how much you are worth or give me a rough estimate? Do you have an idea? Is there a book? Is there a folder? Is there a document that shows you what you are worth? If you don't have that, then you give the answer. Number two, are you satisfied with your present financial condition? Are you satisfied with your present financial condition? That means are you okay with where you are financially? Yes, no, or I don't know. Number three, are you aware of simple ways to increase your net worth? It doesn't mean you are doing it, but are you even aware that, oh, if I do this, if I do this, if I do this? Not that you are doing it, just that you are aware. Are you aware? Do you even know things you can do that can help change your financial situation? Number four. Do you have enough savings to see you through six months of normal living expenses if you lose your job? I need to do a, lot of, a little bit of explaining here. Now, for many years, um, we were teaching people the importance of savings, the importance of having money set aside. You see, in the world of economics, in the world of financial management, every individual and family is supposed to have between six months to eight months living expenses available in cash. So what that means is that if every month you need 8,000 Ghana CDs as an individual or a family, you multiply that 8,000 Ghana CDs by six or by eight, you should have that money in an account somewhere. So that if for any reason you lose your job or your source of income is jeopardized or you have health challenges and you can no more make money, for six months, you still have enough while you are adjusting your life. But you see, the problem is that many of us, we number one say, God forbid. There are many things that God has forbidden that life permitted. There are many things that God has forbidden that our life has attracted. 
And then some of them say, oh, I cannot afford to save. You can actually not afford not to save. And for many years we said this. People did it. Ah, well, this is not realistic. Ah, I didn't know how much I'm earning. How did they expect me to do that? Then COVID came. And all of a sudden, COVID wiped out a lot of people's life. People have not recovered. For six months, people were locked down in different countries. Some countries went beyond six months. Then people now understood. Ah, if I had money, a lot of people became beggars in COVID. A lot of people died in COVID. Not because of COVID itself. They died of poverty and heartbreak. So, do you have enough money saved up? Now, please note, we are here today to help you on your journey. So, by the time you do this test, even if you fail, this will be the last time you will fail. Because what it means is you now know that, ah, I have to start working. And it's good that we are at the early part of the year. So, you have enough time to begin to make adjustments even about this new year. Next. Do you save money on a regular basis? Do you save money on a regular basis? It's amazing that those that came ahead of us, our parents and grandparents and patriarchs and matriarchs, many of them did not go to school, but many of them know what it means to save. They always put money aside, and they always knew how to ensure that everything that comes, they don't eat it up. So when growing up, they would tell us, don't eat with your ten fingers. They didn't learn that in school. They learned by common sense, you know, street smart. And they save. So do you save money on a regular basis? Because many of us know we should save, but we don't. So once in a while, when you have extra money, you just save. And then before you know it, you can spend the money again to buy things that are not worth it. Next. Have you formed the habit of savings? Now, these two things look similar, but they are not. The first one is, do you save money on a regular basis? The second one is, have you formed an habit of saving? I hope you know that everybody is an habitual spender. You don't need anointing to spend. You don't need grace to spend. You just spend. But to save, you need to now form another habit. So the habit of spending is natural. The habit of saving is <laughs> intentional. You have to be intentional to say, look, I have to start saving. But to spend, ah, you just spend. So have you formed the habit of saving? Now, one thing I've noticed, when I started out in 97, 98 on this journal world question, there are many things that are available now that were not available in my own time. Right now, there are actually apps and there are software that can help you to save that any money that enters your account, even banks have services now where you can tell them to do a direct debit from any money that enters into a savings account, into an investment account. So, you can actually automate your savings whereby you don't have access to the money. Years ago, um, I think, uh, I can't remember what year, but I opened my account in South Africa. But it's a long time ago. And then I got to the bank. We did, went through all the process because I bought, we bought some land. We wanted to, we were building an estate inside of, so we bought land. And then, uh, so I got an account. And then when I got to the bank, they gave me two account numbers. And I was like, hello, sorry, what's this all about? They said, oh, no, no, this is your savings wallet. I said, what do you mean by savings wallet? I did, did, because they didn't do that in my country. That was the first time I was realizing that a bank actually, they said, no, this is a savings wallet. So this account is your main account. This is a sub-account attached to your main account is a savings wallet. So if you want to pay money directly into your savings wallet, you use this account. But if you want to pay money into your main account, you use this account. And then you can transfer money from your main account into your savings wallet. But any money in your savings wallet, you can't touch it. You cannot access it with your ATM card. You cannot access it with any... You have to come physically into the bank. To, ah. So I'm like, wow, this is good. So that is savings by force. <laughs> I said, this is good. And so have you formed the habit of savings? Now, let me help you understand this because many times we don't realize, you see, I've studied wealth, I've studied finance, I've studied poverty and I realize that a lot of people that we met in this world, our parents, our grandparents, even though they did not go to school, they actually have common sense and street smarts. How many of you have heard of what they call a susu and contribution where people will come together? That's compulsory savings. They've been doing it. So 10 people will come and say every month, 1,000 Ghana. Then somebody will carry January. Somebody will carry by the time you have carried January, whether you like it or not, you will pay. 
you will not spend that money because you know that if you mess up that cycle, they will spoil your name on the street or in the... You know? So, that this and these things were done. They built houses. They sent us to school. And now, we that went to school, we don't have common sense. Do you understand? So, it's amazing. So, you need to understand that so that when you answer, you answer. Number seven. Do you have a well-defined and documented financial goals? Do you have a well-defined and documented financial goals? Do you have a well-defined and documented financial goals? You know, uh, well, I'm a pastor, but I hate religion. Because religion is more dangerous than the devil. Christianity is not a religion. It's a relationship with your creator. You know what people do? God bless me. Oh, Lord, bless me. That's not a prayer. That's actually a useless prayer. There's nothing like God bless me. You already bless. The Bible says you are blessed. The Bible says God has blessed you with us. We shall bless in every place. What does it mean to be blessed? It means to be equipped. It means to be empowered. So when you say God bless me, it's a useless. God doesn't understand. It's like, Lord, make me a man. It's not a prayer. You're already a man. So do you have a documented goal? You know, some of you now, if I say, what's your financial goal this year? I want to make more money. What's that? What's that? I want to make more money. What's your definition of more money? Do you know how much you made last year? So what do you mean by more money? Do you know that many of the prayers you are praying can never be answered because it was answered seven years ago? Yeah. Many of you are praying, Lord, I just want to be able to make 100,000 Ghana cities every year. Oh Lord, I want to make 100,000 Ghana cities every year. And God is like, what is he talking about? You made 100,000 Ghana cities seven years ago. But you are not even aware because there is no document. You are not documenting the money coming through your hand. Many of you don't realize that money has come through your hand that is more than what is available in your life now. But because the money is not available now, you didn't know it has already passed through your hand. And you are praying a prayer that has been answered seven years ago that can never be answered again. That's why many of you are praying and frustrated. Because most of the prayer you are praying, you are just praying useless prayer. That is a religious palliative. It makes you feel good. Amen. Amen. But nothing will change because God will just be wondering who did this to you. So do you have a well-defined and documented financial goals? Number eight, do you have a bank account? 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 You may think that, um, ah, what does it mean? Everybody has a bank account. No, everybody does not have bank accounts. I'm telling you. <laughs> so do you have a bank account? Some people think that, oh, I don't have money to be paying bank charges. I don't want any bank to take, and they keep all their money in cash. And there is a limit to how much you can keep in cash. Next, do you reconcile your bank statements every month? You know, many of you have bank accounts, but you don't even check your account statement because you think you don't have money. Do you know that if your bank is removing three, four, five, ten Ghana CDs from your account every day or every week or every month? Many of you will not know. Now, because you think it's more money, multiply that by three million people in a bank and think of what it means. A woman, an elderly woman in the United States, was able to bust a major fraud ring in a major bank in America just because she was very concerned about checking and reconciling her bank statements every month. So every month she would check, say, oh no, I said two dollars. Where, where is this money? She would go to the bank, excuse me, I didn't spend this money, this one, I, this one in red, I, I marked it. That, so she was, she would just say, oh mommy, where, where, where? and then one day she came to school, I've been noticing that every week one dollar is leaving my account every week. They did not take her serious, but someone just said, ah, you mean it every week? Say yes, and she brought statements and showed them, say what? That's how they discovered that someone that was a manager in that branch, like years ago, programmed, wrote a code and put it in the system. So one dollar was being deducted from every account in the bank that had more than $1,000. You know, if you have $1,000 and they remove $1 every week, in one week they will remove only $54, $52. So 
it will still, you know, because you have read over a thousand, and that guy has been deducting money for like maybe eight or nine years. Millions have gone, but it was that woman. So many of you don't know that banks steal your money. You don't know that there are a lot of money that are deducted from your account that if you go and query it, they, oh, sorry, we didn't realize that. Oh, sorry, it was a mistake. I'm telling you. But because you don't take all these things serious. And guess what? Many of you don't take it serious because you think you are poor. And you don't realize that the habits you form now are the things that will affect you when you grow. And then people will be stealing millions from you. You will know they are stealing millions because you are not taking those things serious. Hello? Number 10, do you keep record of your income and expenditure? Do you keep record of your income and expenditure? Like I said earlier on, many of the prayers you are praying have already been answered, but you don't have any record. And that's why you didn't know. So, if I'm to ask you now, how much money came into your life in 2023? Do you have an answer? If you're a salary earner, and I ask you how much money, you will say you have an answer. You say, oh, my salary times 12. But that's not true. Because last year, apart from your salary, many other monies came into your hand. So, did you document it? So, you must have a record of your income and your expenditure. Because once your expenditure is greater than your income, your upkeep will become your downfall. So, many of us, because we don't have a record of our income, we don't even realize what's happening to us. Now, I can tell you, you see, when you begin to read the books and study, you realize that there are laws of lives that also assist you in world creation. And there are, these laws guide you. So we have what we call the Parkinson's law. Parkinson's law states that expenditure will always rise to meet up with income. So if you are earning 3,000 Ghana CDs, you will spend between 3,000 and below. But once your salary increases from 3,000 to 5,000, your expenditure too will increase. Why? Because you will start adding extra things. Maybe before you used to eat at home, now you want to go to a restaurant. Maybe before you used to do trot trot, now you want to do Uber or boat or taxify. Why? You now meet. You, and then another one is the 20, 80, 20 or 20, 80 principle. And it says that over 80% of your income comes from 20% of your labor. But because you are not able to have a document to know which 20% is producing the 80%, most of the time you may spend most of your time doing 80% activity that are producing 20% income. And you'll be very busy but poor. Why? Because you just don't have a document to guide you. Since 1998, I can show you in paper and biro every money that has ever entered into my life and every expenditure to 99.99% accuracy. I am that finicky about this thing. Hello? So if I spend money, I will carry, if I open my bag, my, something for you now, you will see what, fine, let me show you so that you know. <laughs> Can you see in and out? You see there, I've write, I'm writing. When I gave offering, I I've written all the offering, I gave offering two days ago, I gave yesterday, I've written it. I did the transfer, I've written it. Do you understand? I've written it. The book they sold two days ago, I've written. The one they sold yesterday, I've written it. Why? Because when I get home now, I will now transfer this into the master list and then I continue my life like that. <laughs> so you may not, you mean I'm old school, you may not need to do this. You may need, have a folder or a file in your phone or whatever and do that. I'm not a technology you know, some of us, we are still trying to catch up. <laughs> so we, get, we employ people to do the technology for us. <laughs> so, so, but that's, so you need to have a record. What are my income? And then where are the income coming from? So that the next time you look at your life, you will now realize, that, okay, even in 2023, this labor produced this income. And this labor produced this income. It means I should stop wasting time on this one because it's not producing. Because many of you are good people. You are sincere, but you are sincerely wrong. You are very sincere people, but you are sincerely wrong and sincerely poor. Because you are wasting time on useless activities that will make people to be healing you, but you are still poor. 
Because they are not paying you for the healing. Hello? So you should focus on things that really produce where you can. Look, look read your Bible. It says, cast not your pearls before swines. It's simple. If you want it, you pay for it. If you don't, can't afford it, you leave it. Next. Do you know how much you spend, especially every month? Do you know how much you spend every month? Is there a record? So that you know how to plan your life. Do you know how much you spend every month? Number 12. Do you spend less than you earn? Do you spend less than you earn? Because many of us, our expenditure is greater than our income. You even borrow salary in advance. And if you wear tomorrow's clothes today, you'll be naked tomorrow. If you eat tomorrow's food today, you'll be hungry tomorrow. If you live tomorrow's life today, you have no life to live tomorrow. So many of you don't understand the concept of how life works. So you keep hoping for a better tomorrow. But that's a mirage. I hope you know there is nothing called tomorrow. There's nothing called tomorrow. There's nothing called future. It's just a concept. Hello? Now, if you don't believe, let me help you. Today is the tomorrow you spoke about yesterday. So you're already in a tomorrow. <laughs> Hello? You know that 10 years ago you said your future is bright. Now you are here in the future. Is it bright? There is nobody that has a bright future. Don't let anybody deceive you. Nobody has a bright future. The only bright future you have is the one you create. If you don't create the future, you don't have a future. You can be saying, Amen, the future is bright, Amen. After all your Amen, you will now face reality and create that future. Hello? Can you move into a house that you did not build or buy? Can you sleep on a bed that you don't have? You can't enter a future that you did not create. In case you need help, let me go to the creator. The God that created all of us. If you are a student of the Bible, what did the Bible say about the throne of God? Where is the throne of God? Where is his throne? Where? Eh? Heaven. Okay. So where is his foot too? The earth. Okay, so the throne is in heaven, his foot is on earth. So that means God is so big that he's sitting on a throne that the leg is so long that he's on the earth. Okay, so question. If the heaven is his throne and the earth is his foot too, just an analogy. Who created heaven? God. Who created the earth? So where was he before he created the heaven and the earth? So that means he's sitting in a throne in heaven, his feet is on earth, that means it was the heaven that he created that he now inhabited. Oh. So that future you are looking for, if you don't create it, you won't have it. So you can pray all your life, go to Kumasi Mountain, go to Adon Kumante, go to Shai Hill, spend one week, fast and pray. Oh Lord, my future, my future. And God be wondering. So what are you doing today to produce that future? Because you are where you are today because of the choices and the decisions that you made yesterday. You are a result of your past choices and decisions. If you don't make a different choice and decision now, don't let anybody feel. Five years later, you will still be like this or worse. And it's not going to be village people. Hello? These are realities that religion is messing us up. So you have lazy people in church, lazy, mentally lazy, physically lazy. They are not ready to do anything with their life. They are looking for somebody to prophesy over their life and lay hands on them. What nonsense. So they have gone, oh, your name is John. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are from Akosombo. Oh, Baba. Okay, so we have told you your name. Accurate. You are from Bogatanga, accurate. You are the third born of your father, accurate. Has your life changed? No. You have only gotten an information that is already an information. What do you do with the information? They prophesy to you and say, this year you are going to be a millionaire. You now go and sit down at home. Lord, the prophet has spoken. My million will locate me. What God cannot do. Does that. You now sit down, jobless, no value, no product, no service. And then after one year, you are poor. You now say the prophet is a liar. The prophet did not lie to you. Prophecies don't fulfill themselves. People fulfill prophecy. So after prophecies are given, there are things you do 
for the prophecy to be fulfilled. He said that thou mightest war a good warfare with the prophecy that has gone on on you. So they say you are going to have twins and you are not sleeping with your husband. Are you another male? Ye? <laughs> no, think about it. The man, the man of God prophesied twins. You are not having conjugal right or conjugal consummation with your spouse. You say what God has said will come to pass. He can't come to pass, sir. Hello? So, do you spend less than you earn? Or you just spend money thinking that another one will come tomorrow? Oh, my next month, more, another one will come. That's how people thought more will come until COVID came. Number 13, do you have a household budget and are you successful at managing it? Do you have a household budget and are you successful at managing it? What this means is, do you have a budget for your family and do you successfully manage that budget? So, in your family, do you have a budget of this is for food, this is for this, this is for transportation? Do you have that budget and are you all managing it? Listen to me. I'm a rich man. My wife knows. My children know that we are rich and we have money. But they also know that the fact that we have the money does not mean we will spend the money. We will still have to say this is the budget. Anything apart from this one, forget it. It won't happen. Why? Because we still have a future to, to enter into and to create. Hello? So there are things that when my son or any of the children need it, they will come and say, Dad, um, I need this. That can it fit into the budget? No, that's the end of the story. There's nothing like oh, that deny. Like, hey! There's nothing like that. If you want to buy, you pay with your money. Say, but I don't have money. That's why you are a child. That's why you should listen. When you start earning your own money, you will know how easy it is. Hello, because it's easy to spend other people's money. <laughs> Number fourteen. Do you avoid major credit purchases? Do you avoid major credit purchases? Buy now, pay later. Buy now, pay nothing to 2025. You break your life into installments. Have you noticed that people that are buying things on credit, they hardly buy assets on credit? Most of the people that are offering you credit, they are offering you credit for liabilities and consumables. Come and buy television. Come and buy generator. Come and buy deep freezer. What is the meaning of that? Many of you have gadgets in your house that you have not used. When last did you watch the TV? You are busy working. You, know, you are always on your phone. And you have a television in the parlor, television in the room, television in the kitchen. And those money could have been put together to buy one plot of land in uh, maybe Shy Hills or Dodoa or Pram Pram. And then now one plot you don't have. You say it's the devil. Which devil? Number 15, do you take advantage of all the savings and investment opportunity that come your way? Do you take advantage of all the savings and investment opportunity that come your way? So, opportunities will come for you to save. Opportunities will come for you to invest. But many times, people don't take advantage of those opportunities. The word poor, repeat after me, poor, P O O. R is an acronym. It's an acronym for passing over opportunities repeatedly. So every time you are passing over opportunity, that's why you are poor. Save, you don't want to save. Invest, you don't want to invest. Why? Because a lot of us, as a result of past experiences, as a result of our association, as a result of our mindset, as a result of our upbringing, as a result of our level of exposure, have become pessimistic about life. So everything we believe negative more than positive. So you see a lot of people, ah, I don't want to lose money. Look, any money you are not investing, you are already losing. So what do you mean by that? Look, if you keep 10,000 Ghana CD in your hand right now, and you don't save it for an interest or invest it for a return. With that 10,000 Ghana in your hand, every month it is losing value. So you're already losing money. <laughs> I don't want to lose money, so you hold on to the money. You will discover that what that 10,000 could do last year, it can no more do. That's what we call inflation and devaluation. So the money is being devalued in your hand, 
and the money is being messed up by inflation. So if you don't invest it into something that can work for you, you just realize that you're actually losing money. So many times, people are not willing to take risks that will help them, but they take risks that are useless. I hope you know that we take risks every day. Consciously and unconsciously, we are taking it. Sitting down here is a risk. Aeroplane can land here and one of us will die. You say, oh, God forbid. That's how people said when it happened to them. Hello? Ukraine is in war now. Did they pray for war? Gaza, people were busy in Jerusalem celebrating. They went to bomb them. Did they plan? So every day you are taking... When you enter that taxi, that, that taxi you enter, you took a risk because that man can be a kidnapper. But you keep entering every day because you have never been kidnapped. But do you know that if they kidnap you once and they release you, the next time you want to enter taxi, your action will be different because you now have an experience that is affected. That's what's affecting many of us. We have seen so many people that told us so many bad news that we don't believe it. But you are taking risk every day. Do you know that when you get a job and they employ you, they don't pay you until after one month? Ah, are you sure they will pay you? <laughs> so for one month, you wake up every day. You are going to a work, say, ah, by the end of the month. But do you know there are people that are working at three months, they have not paid them. Four months, they have not paid them. Guess what? They are still going. Hoping that one day they will pay us everything together. And you are still going. And those same people, when you now tell them, bring your salary as well, they say, how do you expect all this pastor? But you are going to work for three months without salary. And you are surviving. The God that made you to survive, you didn't know that that same God will make you. We just don't understand the way life works. So my mom will always say, if you close your eyes for evil people to pass by, good people will also pass by and you will not see. So life is a risk. Investment is a risk. It's risk and return. R and R. So every time you are investing, the higher the risk, the higher the return. The lower the risk, the lower the return. Next. 16. Do you have any investment that helps to reduce your taxable income? Do you have any investment that helps to reduce your taxable income? A lot of us, this is a high level of operation, but a lot of us don't realize that every time you operate based on end income, you are taxed first. But when you become an entrepreneur and an investor, you are only taxed after your expenses are deducted. So if you earn a salary right now, they remove what is called pay as you earn. They remove taxes directly. But a businessman does not pay that tax. So the businessman can do business, make money, deduct all their expenses, and then the remaining money, they will go and use it into, they will tie it to another investment again, and at the end of the year, zero profit. They can even declare a loss with assets sitting down. <laughs> then the next year, they unlock the money again, and they start again. It's called tax avoidance. They are not evading tax, but they avoid it, and it's legal. So many times, you don't realize that the kind of investments you do will determine the kind of tax benefits that you get. Number 17, do you diversify your investment? Do you diversify your investment? That means, is your investment only in one thing or in different places? Can you imagine if all your investment is in Ukraine and there is war? I have a friend in Ukraine. He's been in Ukraine for like 30 years. And in 2006, I met with him. We became close. And then I started managing his finances. And I told him about multiple streams of income. I said, start investing in Nigeria. You are in Nigeria. All this one, you will be insulting your country. I don't know who did this to you. Your country is your country. Asians will go to the Western world. They will never lose sight of their country. Indians will forever be Indian. Chinese will be Chinese. Jews will be Jews. But you that are from local Africa, you will now get there and say, Ghana is bad. Nigeria is bad. The place that created you is bad. As if the place you are going to is better where they are shooting every day, killing people anyhow. So I spoke to my friend. I said, look, you can invest in America. You can invest in Nigeria. And I was able to help him get his first property in Nigeria, second property in Nigeria, first property in America. As I'm speaking to you right now, after 36 years in Ukraine, he left Ukraine as a refugee. Everything he labored for for 36 years gone down the drain. The only thing he has now is what I got for him in America and Nigeria. What if you didn't have that? Hello? 
So many of you, you don't have any diversified investment. All your investment is in one place. Hello? One of my mentees did not listen. When I went to speak for them um, years ago, he took me to his office and the showroom, and the showroom and the warehouse were in the same compound. So I said, oh, do you have any other factory? He said, no, everything is here. I said, ah, it's not wise, so Showroom is here. Warehouse is here. Factory is here. That let your showroom be somewhere else. Let warehouse be somewhere else so that at least you can divert. I said, then do you have insurance? I said, ah, no, ah, insurance. These people are not. Then I left. I went to speak in their church. It was the protocol guy that was taking me around. That's how we're able to have those kind of discussions. So, I left the church, went four years later. The pastor calls me, sir, we want you to come back to do another seminar for us. Because the reason why we didn't bring you every year is because the one you did, they wanted to see it produce, that it has produced though, that we have a lot of people now so that you can come and take us. So I said, no problem. So they come to pick me up, it's the same guy that picks me up. And in the car, the guy starts telling me how that, oh, he's now he's built this house, he's built that house, he's built this, telling me big, big things that he has done. Big, big things. And I'm like, wow, that's amazing. That's nice, that's nice. And then we branched the church, and the church is exactly the same way it was four years ago. So I started wondering, I said, ah, but this guy said people are making it. Even this one, the guy is telling me, testimony. if your life is changing like that, how come the church is still the same? So I saw the pastor. And we greeted, and I saw, he said, you will come and see me in the hotel. So I now asked him, I said, oh, so where is the meeting taking place? Maybe they have a site somewhere. He said, no, is he? I said, yeah, okay. Ah. So I'm like, this same place. So where is the prosperity you are talking about if you are still in this same place? So we went on, got to the hotel. The pastor comes to see me. So I said, sorry, I want to ask a question before I come in the evening because you know me in my mouth, I don't have... I don't have time for useless church people. These people are not serious. They are, they are just in church wasting time. They are the one messing up Christ. I said, so come. That boy that came to pick me, he said, he's a, ah, he said, the man is a big boy now. He's a billionaire now. I said, billionaire. I said, how come the church is like, is it that you are eating the money that they are giving you or what? How can your church still be like this? By now, you should have done. He said, ah, that, they don't tie it. They don't. I said, that man doesn't pay tight. He said, yeah. He's, ah, that he don't. I said, ah, for what reason? He said, how many of them? And I said, what? I said, no, there is no school of money we need, no. It's kingdom wealth summit. <laughs> Let's go. I said, because you are either in the secret court or in the secret place. So, he goes, the guy now comes, picks me to the church, and I tell him I want to see him after. So, when we came back, I sat down with him. So, I asked him. He said, hey, you know, pastor, ah, that, uh, there are many people in the church. You know, when you give money now, people will now know you have money. And I said, but that is God that bless you. I said, is your pastor not a good man? I said, ah, Papa is good. I said, so why can't you support the world? So look at your church. So I did what I needed to do and I left. About eight months later, I was watching the TV in this place in Zeno Nature. I was in another place called Asaba, not too far from each other. So I was watching TV and I saw that a fire gutted a fuel station and gutted some building. And as I was looking, the building looked familiar. I'm like, ah, I know this building, but I didn't get it. But when they were giving, showing it, they were now talking about a church. There was a church, the fuel started, the problem started from a fuel station, burnt like four houses, jumped the church, and continued burning other places. So they were talking about, oh, this God is real, that this church. The church was just the light, the fire just jumped and continued. Then I was like, wow, God is really low. So it was that that made me to now call the pastor to say, a man of God, ah, see what God did. That, that, ah, which church is that? Who is the pastor? That, that church. He said, ah, pastor, have you heard? I said, what? He said, that man, that all his business, everything burns in that fire. I said, what? So, do you diversify your investments? Hello? Next. Are you satisfied with the contribution from your investment into your total income? Are you satisfied? 
from the contribution from your investment into your total income. That means the investments that you have, the cash flow that is coming from those investments, are you okay with them? Are they doing well? Do you make money every month from rents and dividends and returns? And so, Next. Number 19. Do you feel you have a brilliant financial advisor or team of advisors? Because that's another major problem I see. Poor people counseling poor people. And you wonder why your life is the way it is. You are a poor man. Who is your counselor? Poor man. Tenants will not be forming tenant association against landlord. You don't know that whatever you insult, you cannot attract. You are insulting landlord. Hello? That's why many of you are not rich because you, are, you have used your mouth to close the door against yourself. When you were looking for the job, you begged to apply. Now, you are from union against your boss. Eh, monkey, they work, baboon, they chop. We are just working. How much are they paying us? If it's easy to get, start a business, why did your father not start a business and employ you? Why is there no business in your generation that you people have been employed in? Your grandfather didn't start business. Your father didn't start. People are starting business and employing you and you still have the infantry to be insulted. Do you know how easy it is to run business? To be an entrepreneur in Africa, you are a miracle worker. <laughs> Africa is not a strong... The business environment here is very dangerous. The policy, the politicians, the environment, they are killing businesses that for you to be a business person, you must be a miracle worker. I hope you know that many business people that pay you salary, they don't pay themselves. For many years, they will be just reinvesting. Sometimes they have to go and take money from other businesses to pay you. And yet, you'll be saying the money is not enough and you have not brought anything to the table. So who are your advisors? Hello? Who are your advisors? If you need to make a financial decision now, who do you call? Hey, girlfriend. How are you doing? Yeah. I'm just thinking, what is that? Hey, hey, there's this money I have, you know, I was thinking maybe, it's, ah, Google, yeah, there's this new shoe, oh, there's this bag, let's go to Accra Mall. That's the people you are moving with. <laughs> Number 20, do you feel you have sufficient life insurance coverage? You know, in Africa, we don't do life insurance. We say, God is my insurance. Hello? A church, a major church in our country, burnt down this week. On Wednesday, they were starting their convention that night, and the church burnt in the afternoon. The theme of the conference is resurrection. And there can never be a resurrection without death. So the theme of the conference had to be fulfilled. <laughs> It's a sad episode. The church burned down. I sent money, different people were sending money, were helping the church, but there's a question I have not asked because it may be insensitive to ask. I plan to ask the question when I see the man of God face to face. We've just communicated, I've sent money, but when I now get back to the country, I will see him and I'll now, do you people have insurance? Because as terrible as that is, if they have insurance, Insurance will pay. But if they don't have insurance and they say God is in control. No, because many of you don't have life insurance. Hello? You don't. And then even when you want to do life insurance, a lot of women will now be telling their husband, hey, you need to do life insurance to so protect your family. Who told you I will die before you? <laughs> I see a lot of African women. Telling the husband, hey, protect your family. Hey, do life insurance. Hello, man. Do your own too. You insure me, I insure you. You die, I chop. I die, you chop. Which one is uh... <laughs> 21. Do you have a plan for your children's college and university education? Do you have a plan for your children's college and university education? Many of you want your children to school abroad. Do you have any investment that is bringing dollars and pounds? Or is this same Ghana city that is dying every day that you want to use to 
pay school fees in pounds. Or you want to sell your blood. Hello? So, many of you are giving birth to children. Africa, that's our problem. Every year your wife is pregnant as if she's trying to win an award. Rich people, one or two kids. Poor people, five and six. A football team. And we keep deceiving ourselves. Oh, if this one don't make them, this one will go make them. <laughs> we are playing Ludo. and playing draft with children's life. And you give it to children you cannot take care of. Listen to me. The more children you have now, the lower the quality of life you can give them. Hello? For every child you give birth to, it's 25 years for your deliverance. Yeah. For every child, it's 25 years. So by the time you give birth to four, you have, you have borrowed 100 years. <laughs> you say, what are you talking about? Uh -uh. When you give birth to a child, until the child is 25 years old, settled, career, you can ask, okay, do you know that right now, there are 30 year old boys and girls in their parents' house. They can't even afford a house. Yes, you are giving better. More. Do you know that, that now there are people that are married with children? They can't even take care of their own children. It is the mother, grandparents that are reparenting children. Hello? So borrow yourself common sense. One, two, max. Close the file. Because every time you have two children, you already have four. Because two will come and marry them. So two is equal to four. Four is equal to eight. Hello? I still did counseling for a pastor this week. He wants to remarry. So widow, the one has three children, the other one has two. That's already five. In a blended family. So the girl is 33, the man is 46. 13 years age difference. So they sat in front of me. So I asked them. I said, you know me, I don't, I don't have time for all this religious nonsense. So let's go straight to the point. So you have three, you have two, that's five. I say, you, you're a man of God. How much is your income? How much, are you rich? Do you have money? To even take care of the three you have. To now join two, making five. Man, God is helping. I say, I didn't say God is not helping you. Give me figures. <laughs> let's face the reality. You, what do you do for a living? Say, I say, so how much? Are you a rich woman or you are poor? You are struggling? He say, it's coming up. I say, so it's coming up. God will help you. I say, you are fine. I say, <laughs> I say, I hope you know. You, you have two boys and one girl. You, you have two girls. I say, I hope you know that if you have less than five bedroom, this is already a problem. I say, I hope you know. They were looking at me like that. I say, how many bedrooms? They say, three bedrooms. I say, you're already in error. I say, because if you have three bedrooms, Let's even assume that your own girl will join the other girls. But the age difference. And so I started telling them things they didn't think of. I said, I hope you know that the two girls they are bringing, they are not blood with your own children. And your own, you have two teenage boys. I say, ah, they were looking at me. I say, hey. I so now, then they will now tell you now you should do one more, Abby, so that two of you will join together. You want to do two. No, because to cement that relationship, people will be advising them. It will be good for you people to have one together. Then by the time you have one together, the man has say the one can become twins. Or triplets, if God helps you. And then that's how people's life are destroyed, though. In Africa, these are things that people don't sit down. You don't realize that rich people, when they think of transnational wealth, they are thinking of who to marry, how many children to have, how to have. They are thinking of all these things. But poor people will not think God is in control. Hello? So, What's the plan for your children's university education? I hope you know that student loan is the most dangerous loan in the world. I hope you know. The most dangerous loan. They don't forgive student loan. No. <laughs> you pay for life. Hello? But you know the, the uselessness of student loan is the fact that over 80% of what you learn in school is useless. So you borrow money to go into bondage. By the time you now finish the school, double jeopardy. Because, look, you can go and fact check what I'm telling you. Right now in America, we have a lot of people that have master's degree. And they are using BSc to work. 
They can't even work with the master because when people finish school, there's no job. They say, oh, just continue with your master. Just go ahead to master. So they are just gathering degrees and they are seeing a great degree of debt. And many of them, 10, 15, 20 years after graduation, they are still in debt. So have you planned your children's university? Number 22, do you own a house? Do you own a house? Are you a landlord? Or God is in control? There are three people we call Lord. Jesus is Lord. The judge is Lord. The landlord is Lord. Why do we call them Lord? Because the power of life and death is in their hand. Hello? You know you come to church and say the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. If the earth is the Lord, go and take one plot. You will discover that God is not the owner. There is a human being that owns it. Hello? The earth is the Lord by creation. But it does not belong to God by occupation. That's why he said, I will give you the land of the. He's acknowledging that the land now belongs to somebody else. Even though I'm the one that I will now give you their land. And go and look. The promised land is about land though. Hello? How did they enter the promised land? Abraham paid for the promised land. So he said, yeah, they went out the wicked. He's laid up for the righteous. Touch three people and say, hey, hey, hey. Just they play. <laughs> Your eye will be clear after 15 years of religion and poverty. You will all wake up one day. Because people are hating God and hating church now. But it's not God and church you should hate. It's religion you should hate. And hate yourself for not serving God and reading the Bible by yourself. And allowing some people to use suit and tie and tie to the TV. And you know, Ghana, you people have useless titles in this country. See all kinds of titles. Apostle, senior apostle, senior prophet. You, you look for different titles. You are not satisfied with your name. Everybody in Ghana is a prophet. Everybody is a seer. What are you seeing? Look, look, look. If nobody is telling you the truth, tell yourself the truth. If you dance to a particular tune for a very long time, no result. Change tune. Change tune. I've been in ministry for 34 years plus. By October, it will be 35 years. I've been coming to Ghana since 1992. There are people in this Ghana that when we started out in, 1990, in the late 80s, early 90s, they are still in ministry now. Strong. There are people that used to be there. They keep coming every five years, every ten years. They make noise, they go. They make noise, they go. The people that are standing, they are all teaching ministries. Teaching ministry built on the word of God. If you build ministry around the gift, it will fizzle out. But people are still not learning. Everybody is looking for prophet. If you go to start a church now to teach common sense and teach Bible, they will say you are boring. They want somebody to be given roll call. Hey, yeah, your name is John. Your name is John. and everybody is excited because the prophetic is very sweet. It's very spectacular. Everybody will be jumping. Hey, after you hey, finish. That's the point. So do you own a house? Your grandfather was a tenant. Your father was a tenant. Now you are a tenant. You say it's a generational cause. It's not. It's a generational choice. Hello? Because the money... Look, when I, I, my, I, I have a development, I have a house and office and stuff in Kaswa. When I went to that place years ago, because of my understanding, when I saw the way, I went there, and the Kaswa bridge that is there now was not there there was no bridge. Even the Oboom Road that is now fully tarred was a forest. So I went there. They were taking me into the forest, into the forest. They said, this is the land. I said, no problem. When I entered the car, my PA that came with me from Nigeria, he said, excuse me, sir. Ah, you want to buy the place? I said, yes. Ah, he said, this, ah, that this place, there's no life here. I said, that's the way it works, sir. I said, we have practiced this thing. That's the way it works. I said, a city today was a village yesterday. A village today will be a city tomorrow. You don't wait to buy land. You buy land and wait. I bought the land, did all my documentation. The next year, less than 13 months later, they started the bridge. In less than two years, the bridge was done. Before you know it, they tied the road. My house is now on an express road. <laughs> my, then banks started coming. We would like to lease your property for 10 years. I said, I'm not leasing. It's my own. I'm not leasing. 
I still have land that I can build up to 28 units. Still sitting down there. How much did I buy the land? The same money you used to buy iPhone. Many of you have bought iPhone 12. You are not okay. They brought 13. You are not okay. 14, 15. You are just messing up your life. Buying gadgets. Hello? It's not by your handset. It's by your mindset. Hello? You are buying bag and shoe to match. Yet your destiny is not matching your bank account. You are buying bone straight. Your life is not straight. See some brother, three-piece suits. You don't have three-story building. Six pack without six figure. And many of you are falling in love with all these strange boys. Say, be a dead gang. Be a beer be 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 without money. Be a dead gang. Five boy, no pimples, no, no balance sheet. When it's time to pay rent, is this sex you used to pay rent or kissing you, my baby, my baby? Do you have a plan to retire in comfort? Do you have a plan to retire in comfort? Everybody on earth will face one of these three things. Resign, retrench, retire. Resign, retrench, retire. It's the three inevitable hours. So are you prepared for it? Next, have you prepared your will? You know, Africans and religious people say, will, will, I don't want to die. Paper does not kill. Writing a will does not kill people. Hello? Look, if you die without a will, it's called to die in test states. So it therefore means that if you don't plan where your property will go, people will decide where it will go by themselves. Hello? So have a will. Once you have something to share, design a will. Once you are 40 years old, anything you gather, come up with a will. Are you in control of your financial future? Or God is in control? Because that's a religious slogan that my <laughs> religious people just say, oh, God is in control. God is in control. God can provide food for you, but he can't feed you. You must put the spoon in the food. You must swallow it and digest it. I love you, I love you, I love you. I can't go to the toilet on your behalf. You will do it by yourself. So all this God, 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 religious thing, read your Bible and put things in kingdom perspective. And let's stop insulting God and insulting and just making mockery of this faith. God does not raise unintelligent people. Christianity is not, is not a suspension of your faculties. Hello? As a believer, you have the mind of Christ and it's a sound mind. It's not a confused mind. Finally, number 26, are you satisfied with the contribution you have made to the world? Are you satisfied with the contribution you have made to the world? Your life is not about the duration, but the donation. So it's not about how long you live, it's how well. How old was Jesus when he died? 33, 33, 33 now. now let me ask you a question. Don't answer. But how many of you are here, you are more than 33? Don't answer, but you know what I mean. So now, have you achieved anything that if you die now, they will celebrate you? Hello? So it's not about, uh, I'm, there's the time. There's no time. Hello? You are 33. You are 35. And you are still thinking you are young. Why? So, let's calculate. So, count... How many no or I don't know do you have? So that we can finish first session. How many no or I don't know do you have? How many no or I don't know do you have? So count it. No and I don't know. How many? How many no or I don't know do you have? So please, listen before we wrap up. Don't feel bad about your results. That's why we're here. So that by the time you repeat this thing in December, you have a better result. By the time you repeat it next year, you have a, so don't feel bad. This meeting is not always to help you. 
So, then this paper, you are not submitting it, it's your own. So you can go home, duplicate it, and be doing it every six months to help your mind. Hello. So now, if your no plus I don't know is between zero to four, can I see your hand? No and I don't know is between zero to four. Okay. If your no or I don't know is between five to ten, can I see your hand? Between five to ten. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight people. Good. So those of you that are in those eight of you, you're on the right track. So you just need to keep improving. Then if your no or I don't know is between eleven and twelve. No or I don't know is between eleven and twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, so eleven of you weak pulse. Your pulse is weak, so we can see there's pulse, there's pulse. You just need to do <coughs> you need revival. Okay, charge it up. Can we go? One, two. <coughs> That's what you need. But if you know or I don't know, it's 13 and above. Let me see your hand. Welcome to life. <laughs> Welcome to life. Today, God will help you. In Jesus' name. So we're going to go on a 10 minutes break. 10 minutes break. The purpose of this break uh, is twofold. Number one, you need to ease yourself. You need to use the restroom. So that we, because when I come back now, we're going to the main session for today. The second reason for this break is so that you can go and get materials. So all of you that don't have life, you need life. So go and collect life at the table <laughs> so that you can have something. So now listen to this material so that you can because I want you to go there, buy, and then you come back. Then when we are done, I will autograph the books for you. This is called Pathway to Wealth. It comes with a CD. There's a CD in there and a DVD inside. So Pathway to Wealth is 200 Ghana CDs. This one is the latest book that just came out. Now it's how to create wealth as a career person. Now with this one, there is an audio program link inside for you to go and listen to the audio version. And there is also a video part one to four video. So there is a link there also that connects you to the part one to four video. This one is 300 Ghana CDs. Then this is the school of money. This one, there is also a CD and a DVD in there. This is 350 Ghana CD. So now 350 plus 300 plus 200, everything is 950 that you are going to buy if you can afford it. Now, you now see this one. These three books are inside. Then, the other books inside are 50 common money mistakes to avoid. That one alone is 200 Ghana cities. Then, you have bridging the gap between the rich and the poor. That's another 200 Ghana city. How to increase your value in the marketplace. That's another 200 Ghana city. The secret of my journey. That's so. Inside here, you have like 36 different books and materials and audio. So it's called the Wealth Creation Master Pack. Everything here is over 4,000 Ghana cities. But you get it for just 1,000 Ghana cities. And now, when you are buying this, please ask them for the code. There is a code they will give you to unlock it. So with this one, you can download it on your laptop, you can use it in your car, you can listen to it on your phone, so you have multiple opportunities to take advantage of this. So whichever one you can buy, when we finish, I will now autograph for you. So we are going on 10 minutes break. I will see you in 10 minutes. God bless you. Go and buy material. It's a free meeting. Go and pay. Then he had to follow, yeah.
Minutes more. If you are buying anything, we need to start five minutes.
As a result of what I'm about to share, or you have any question with reference to any aspect of life that you need clarity about, please start writing those questions down. We are not going to be giving microphone to anybody so that we can save time. So once we are done with this session, we'll take another five or ten minutes break to go use a bathroom break, get materials, and then we will now collate the questions together and answer the questions because I want us to see how we can keep to the time that we have planned for. So you're welcome back. How was session one? Was it good? Okay. So session two, I want to take you on chapter four of the new book. Ten global facts about wealth creation. Ten global facts about wealth creation. And the reason why I want to do this is to just give us the engine room of wealth. Once you have the engine room and you understand 
the basics. You can always operate on your own in any terrain. So let me give you an example. Every word that exists right now comes from the 26 letters of the alphabet. A to Z. So every word that is existing now, every word that has ever existed, and every word that will ever exist is from those 26 letters. So when you start out in the world of academic education, the first thing they would do is to tell you to be scribbling so that your hand can be connecting to your brain. I don't know if you have ever bought a wireless device before. You need to make a connection between the device and a main device. So when you start out, they start children with crayons, they will just the scribbling. What they are doing is connecting the different neurons of their body because your hands are connected to your brain, your words are connected to your brain. The speech nerve is at the center of the brain. So when children start talking, da 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 is all that there is about numbers. And every other number is a combination of 0 to 9. A to Z is all there is about letters. Every other thing is a combination of A to Z. So once you understand A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H to Z, you have what you need. The next thing is now to know how to combine B, O, Y to be boy or B, O, O, K to be book. And that's how you grow. So what I want to do now is to give you that infrastructure so that you can now, no matter where you go, no matter what you meet in life, you will know that, okay, B-O-O, okay, this one is book. Oh, this is B-O-O-M, this boom. You will now know what to do. So you won't be confused because it is the engine. The engine is already inside. No matter where you go, you know how to navigate your way. That's what I want to do now. Do you understand that? So let's go. So there are 10 global facts about world creation that I have listed out in this new book and um, you need to know so number one there is a wealthy place there is a wealthy place please listen the wealthy place is not a geographical location the wealthy place is a state and a stage in the life of people where they get into and money is not their problem and guess what? There are human beings on that realm now. There are people on earth today that have too much money. And they did not steal it. They labored for it. They have opportunities that brought it. So number one, there is a wealthy place. One of the things that affects many of us is the program and the software that runs our mind. And one of the things that has affected many of us is that we walk around with what is called a scarcity mentality. We have this belief that there is no money. We have this belief that there is scarcity. We have this belief that, oh, it's not enough. Have you noticed that in Ghana, people have been stealing money with the whole of their heart and the money has not finished? Hello? Think of all the money that has been stolen in this country. Think of the billions and millions that have been stolen. They will borrow money. You will still not see what they did with the borrowed money. And yet, you, you are here, you are laboring with the whole of your life, and you say there is no money. There is money. So there is a wealthy place. There is a place you can get to where money will no more be a problem. There are people on earth today that are so rich that they have to now set up a foundation and employ hundreds of people to help them share the money. A whole foundation is set up, and the purpose of the foundation is to solve problems. And they now employ over 100 people and say, your job will find where we can put this money to help people. That is money. And those people don't have green blood. They don't have two heads. There are people on earth today, they don't even know what poverty is, except they see it in documentary. Yeah, they don't know what poverty is. They don't understand. When you say poverty, they don't understand. So people like that, they would think that every poor man is a lazy man. Because to them, they've never struggled for anything. The only way for them to become poor is for you to teach them poverty. 
Have you watched it? The, there is a movie that used to, when we were growing up, The Prince and the Pauper. I think they have done different versions of that. Now, The Prince and the Pauper is about two identical um, looking twins. One was in the palace, one was in the streets. And then they met each other and decided to swap. Now, the one that was on the street was sent to the palace. They clothed him in, but he could not perform because the thing is, is not inside. <laughs> if you don't have it, you don't have it. If you like, dress a pig with uniform, bait it, put perfume. When you are done, the pig will look for death because it is the nature, not the nurture. Hello? But the one that was a prince, when they got to the street, he could not blend. He was at said, excuse me, you can't do that. No, that's wrong. He said, who are you to be talking? Because what was inside was still coming out. So there is a wealthy place. That's number one. So don't go around thinking there is no money. Look, there are people in this world that everything you are praying for, they can write one check and give it to you and nothing will happen. They will not even feel that they have done anything. So help me answer the question. If a human being on earth has that kind of power, why do you think God will create you to come and suffer? And then somebody has enough money that if they give you one million dollars, they will even know that they have gotten anything. So why do you think the whole creator will create you, you will grow through life, and he wants to see you suffer? Where do you get that idea from? Hello? So there has to be a change. The software running your mind must start changing. And that is what books like this do. They help to reprogram you. Because everything you know today, somebody taught you. You don't believe. Let me prove it. I hope you know that every one of us in this world, when we're born, we're born without fear. There are only two natural fears. The fear of noise and the fear of falling. Those are the only two natural fears. That's why when a child is born and you make noise, the child will, will do like this. Because that's the number two. When they begin to walk, they fall. Those are the only two. Every other fear. If a six-month-old baby is here and a python enters this place, all of us will run. The baby will not run. The baby will be playing with the python. Why? There is no fear. So all the things you are afraid of, somebody taught you. All the beliefs you have now that is making your life the way it is, somebody taught you. So in order to have a fresh belief, somebody else needs to teach you. That's why you need to get books and materials. Hello? If you need to... Many of you are already fasting in January. You fasted. All the fasting, the money you should have used to eat, use it to buy a book now. Or increase another seven days fasting. To buy material because fasting will not help you if your brain is not working well. <laughs> Hello? Please don't let anybody deceive you. I'm a pastor. I've been around for 35 years in this job. Ignorance is not a demon. You can't cast it out. So the brain, hold on, hold on, hold on. What you don't know, you don't know. Hello? And you cannot pray your way out of a problem you behaved your way into. So, number one is what? There is a world of place. Number two, there is a path that leads to the world of place. There is a path that leads to the world of place. Every one of us here today did not come from the same location. There are people here from outside Accra. Some people came here from Kumasi. Some people came here from Tema. Came from different places and they are here now. Some of you came from different parts of Accra. And you are here. So question... How come we all came from different places and we are here? Because this address is fixed. This is a fixed location. So let's now understand that. So this now is a fixed location. The wealthy place is a fixed location. So no matter where you are, if you already know what the wealthy place is all about, there is a path that will take you from wherever you are to the wealthy place. That's what you need to discover. Because your path is not my path. Some people will arrive at the wealthy place through businesses. Some people will arrive at the wealthy place through their gifts and their talents. Some people arrive at the wealthy place through inheritance. But there is a path. So once you understand that there is a wealthy place, the next thing is to know that there is a path that leads to the wealthy place. And once you understand that path, no problem, just continue the journey. It's only a matter of time. If someone left, uh, someone left, came here yesterday night around 11 p.m. from Kumasi, I arrived yesterday because of this meeting. Now, the person that came from Kumasi took hours to get here. 
Some people live around the streets here. They trek down to come here. But we are all here. Hello? When God spoke to Noah, he said, bring two of every animal, male and female, and bring them into the ark. The lion made it. The cheetah made it. The tiger made it. But guess what? The snail also made it. The tortoise also made it. And they did not close the door until the tortoise arrived. So don't let anybody put you under any unnecessary pressure. Eh, my mate are doing this. Nobody is your mate because your mate are also in the grave. So all this, my mate, my mate, and put yourself under unnecessary pressure. Don't, don't stop that breakdown. Face reality. There is a worldly place and there is a path that will take you there. Just focus on your focus. It's only a matter of time. Number three. Wealth is created. Wealth is created. Nobody wakes up wealthy. Nobody just automatically becomes wealthy. You have to create the wealth. Wealth creation. You have to create it. Wealth is created. So in order for you to become wealthy, someone has to take responsibility for the creation of wealth. You can't just sit down and expect that somebody else will take responsibility for you. No. No one will plan your life for you successfully without your direct involvement. So, wealth is what is created. Now, I hope you know that when people become successful in life, one of the things that is common to successful people is that there is envy and jealousy. And that envy and jealousy will make people to say things like, we don't even know how he got his money. Let's go and investigate the source of his money. Now, but have you ever heard anybody say they want to investigate the source of your poverty? Nobody investigates the source of your poverty. That's your responsibility. It's your responsibility to tell yourself, I'm tired of poverty. Why am I poor? Why is my father poor? Why is my mother poor? Why is it that nobody in our family is a billionaire? That's your responsibility. So most of the things you people are calling generational costs in church, say, we come want to break that cost. Every voice inheritance. It's not generational cost. It's a generational decision. It's a generational choice. It's a generational pattern. It's a generational behavior. So when you study it, you know, these are things that we have done. So you don't just go, oh, Lord, we pray. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Look, church. Church can ruin your life. Oh. I'm telling you, religion, very terrible. Pray, 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 pray. The wealth of the wicked is laid off for the righteous. Ow, ow. Ow. So somebody will labor and come and give it to jobless you. Is that the way God behaves? Is that the kind of God you are serving? An unfair God? Hello? That will take from somebody and come and give to irresponsible people to destroy it. Where do we get all these scriptures from? That we don't read it well. Hello? The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. What verse? Or who told you that one? The earth is the Lord. Ow. Go and take one plot. You will discover that God is not the owner. The cattle on a thousand hills belongs to our God. Go and touch cattle. You will end up in, in jail for stealing cattle. Hello? So it is your responsibility to sit down and realize that, okay, my father worked in Ghana Railways. No, my grandfather worked in Ghana Railway. My father worked in Ghana Airways. Now I'm in Ghana Post Office. And you now look at that trajectory and say, hmm, when my grandfather was working in Ghana Railway, he was telling my father, all you need to do is go to school, get a good grade, get a job, and then you will pension, and then you'll be getting pension. So they programmed my father to follow the footstep. By the time my father finished school and joined Ghana Airways, Ghana Railway has died. Then my grandfather was depending on my father to take care of him. And then my father too continued the same colonial foolishness and was telling me, go to school, get good grades so that you get a job. Now I'm in Ghana Post Office. Ghana Airways has died. My father is depending on me. And Ghana Post Office has become useless because nobody's posting letter anymore. Now, where is the demon there now? Show me the demon in that. It's decision. Your grandfather had six wives and 42 children. Your father did three and 11. Now, you have one wife, one side chick. It's the same spirit. 
but it's not a demon. It's a choice you have made. It's a pattern that you are following. Your grandfather did not build any house. Your father didn't build. Now, you are a big boy. You are a tenant. You are packing a $10,000 car in a rented apartment and you don't know that you are stupid and somebody should slap you. But you are doing big boy around town. Now, these are the things that are happening that we are now saying is a demon. But because you don't want to take responsibility for your irresponsibility, you will now be blaming village people that don't even know you exist. Because church people are very funny. And I ask myself a question. You say the devil is after you. Please, sir, who are you? Please explain to me who you are. What is so special about you that the devil is after you? Please tell me. No, tell me. How many dead bodies have you raised? How many blind eyes have you opened? How many souls have you saved? What is so special about you? What impact are you making in the kingdom or against the kingdom of that that makes you a threat? That the devil is after you. You are just plain stupid. Somebody is not telling you the truth that you are just wasting away your life. The devil is after you. For what? If the devil captures you, can the devil testify? Is he a testimony that we captured her? He say, and they will say, who? Say, ah, say, who? Ah, who? They look, they're looking. If you go to a face me, I face you house, a tenement building, do you see a gate man there? Do you see security personnel there? Why? Because there's no valuables there. <laughs> you won't see armed robbers and kidnappers. <laughs> and they will now go to the shanty. People are living under the bridge. They will now come and say, we came to kidnap. Yeah, they will be happy. You kidnap me. At least you will be feeding me. <laughs> kidnap me. <laughs> Hello? Kidnappers in Nigeria have kidnapped people. Ah, kidnapping is bad. In Nigeria, they kidnap people for the charge card. They kidnap people for food. They just, just said more. No, it's true. It's very terrible in some places. And they have kidnapped people and they call the phone and say, you have a... Ah, no, keep him. It's okay. Thank you. Just keep him. No, no, no. We are not paying. No, we are not negotiating. No. Keep him. Don't call this number again. Don't call this number again. Keep him. <laughs> Somebody say, wealth is created. And I will take the responsibility for creating the world. Number four. You have to become wealthy to attract wealth. And I want to stay here for a while also. You have to become wealthy to attract wealth. Please listen and listen well. In this kingdom, it is first internal before it becomes external. Everything around you will align with your internal condition and internal capacity. So, many times, People are always asking, excuse me, sir, what can I do to become rich? What can I do? We're always focusing on what to do, what to do. It's not what you do. It's who should I become. This version of you cannot be rich and wealthy. There is a version of you that has to become a reality for wealth to come. So you have to become rich to attract riches. You have to become wealthy to attract wealth. If you don't become it, you can't attract it. And I can tell you stories upon stories for real. Look, I can give you 100,000 Ghana CD now. And by December, it will reduce to the level of your internal capacity. If your internal compass is 22,000 Ghana CDs, if I give you 100,000, you start wasting it. You buy iPhone, you buy laptop, you buy shoe, you help people. It's when it, when it becomes 22,000. That's why your brain will start working. <laughs> True life story. This is the way it works. Because, look, do you know that when you jump out of, if you do bungee jumping, you jump out of aeroplane, 10,000, 15,000 feet above, when you jump and you want to use a parachute, they will tell you there is a particular feat you must get to before you unlock the parachute. That's what happens. That is the feat where you have entered a balance realm. So if I give you 100,000 and you are a 22,000 person, you will be having a free fall from 100,000. You will just be making mistakes. You will be buying things you don't need. You will be trusting people you don't know. But when it remains 22, mm, your brain will now start working because that's your capacity. The one someone say, no, no, I can't do that. I am, I'm planning. You will now start. So what you should be working on is to grow internally. That is what seminars and books do. 
They help your internal growth. Inside you, there is a whole city inside you. A whole city inside you. So, if you continue to build the internal city, after a while, the city inside will be produced outside. But many of us, we are always thinking of what can I do? What can I do? It's not what you can do. It's who you should become. Read your Bible. When Nicodemus came to Jesus, what did Nicodemus say? What must I do to inherit eternal life? What did Jesus say? He didn't say, do this, do that. That's what people are expecting us to say. Oh, do this, do that. Seven steps to, eight steps to. The steps will not fail, will not work when you are not the right person. That's why everybody that has won the lottery, are they rich? They won the lottery, but the lottery will reduce to the level of their internal level. So he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus Christ said, except a man be. Be. Except you be. If you don't become born again, whatever you do is not going to matter in this kingdom. So you have to be. So that is the most important thing you need to understand. So number one, there is a what? There is a worldly place. Number two, there is a path that leads to the worldly place. Number three, world is created. Number four, you must become it to attract it. Are you seeing the progression now? So, that becoming is where many of us are. And we don't realize that we are not who we used to be. Even though we are not where we are supposed to be. But we are so much in a hurry that we want to go and get what we don't have the qualification to handle. And that's how many people have ruined their journey in life. Listen to me. There's what we call the danger of success. There are temptations you can never face as a poor man. It won't happen. You won't face it. But there are temptations that when you become rich, you will now know what is called temptation. Hello? So what God is doing is that he's building character in you, building capacity in you, so that by the time the money comes, you have become the version of you that can handle the money. And you will not disgrace yourself and start. Do you know that there are people that never believe they could drink and smoke? They never believe that they could carry women until they had money. And then women, they are. Ah. You know, when you are poor, you think you are ugly. But have you ever seen any ugly rich man? No, think about it. Think about it. Have you seen any ugly rich man in your life? Never. Rich men are not ugly. See their wife, you will know. Why? Because once you become rich, you are no more ugly. You see some people, they look like monkey, but they are beautiful. Why? Because the bank account is fat. So it's not all this six pack going to the gym. You better have one amusement park. <laughs> that is enough. <laughs> Hello? That can do something. Hello? You have six pack, you can't pay rent. It's time to pay rent. You say, baby, let's pray. To pay rent, you are pay, praying. <laughs> Hello? So that becoming takes time. That becoming takes time. So let's continue to grow. Let's continue to grow. Let's continue to grow. Don't think that, oh, I don't have money. No, you already just become that person. This happened to me in 1998. 1998. I remember in December of 1997, we went to a restaurant. I will never forget a place in our country, a restaurant in our country. We went there, and it's, the place is called Sheraton Hotel in Ikeja. And there are four of us. And they're doing a Christmas buffet. So we went there for Christmas buffet. And it was 3,000 naira per person. Four people is 12,000. When I entered into that place, with all the joy, it's Christmas, oh baby, hey guy, well, we sat down. By the time I looked at the price, I was shaking like this. Three times, or so 12,000. That 12,000 was like 12 billion. I said, you mean we eat now? They will collect 12,000. And we'll go home and go to the toilet and the money is gone. I couldn't undo it because I had not become that person that can do that. Hello? And I was thinking, ah, how many chairs will we buy in church? This 12,000 will buy like three dozen. I was thinking, my brain was just, ah. I said, please, let's go. We can't, I can't afford it. Let's go. 
1997. Fast forward. In 2001, I took 23 people to the same place and paid over 300,000 and I didn't feel anything. Why? I had become a different person. Do you understand? So don't ever look down on yourself or think that because you, don't, you are not what you have, you are who you are. You are not what you drive, you are what drives you. You are not what you wear, you are what wears you. You are not where you live, you are what lives in you. So focus on those things. The intangibles are the real one. Because let me tell you something, I've lost money before. And I didn't lose my life. Hello? I did a business in the UK one time and I lost 123,000 pounds. And I just moved on laughing. And one of my friends said, are you all right? I said, yeah. No. He said, ah, that, that money you said you, that you lost, not that you did. I said, so it's money now. We can make another one. He said, hey, 123,000 pounds. Do you understand? Because you grow to that level. So you must grow on the inside. Number five. Wealth creation takes time. Wealth creation takes time. One of the challenges of our world today is impatience. People are not patient. They want to blow. You don't blow, you grow. Everything that blows scatters and disintegrates. Bombs blow. Balloons blow. You only see fragments. When you blow, we will end up with fragments of you. But when you grow, you keep growing. So, wealth creation does what? It takes time. You see, all these get-rich-quick schemes have continued to kill people, and it's not new. Now, people have been saving and investing money, doing fixed deposits, doing treasury bills, buying land for centuries. But you now, the one that has been working, you don't know, is the forex and crypto that you say you want to do until the crypto nights your life. Why? Because somewhere in your subconscious mind, you are greedy and covetous. And you want to blow. So, ah, I can tell you stories upon stories of people that invested in crypto and they were kryptonized. Because I can guarantee you with fact and figures that over 70% of the crypto coins out there are fake. Over 70%. Many of the platforms you are trading on don't exist in the real world. They are being hosted in Uganda, hosted in South Africa, hosted in Belgium. They are not even in the scale of glow. It's just an African thing to control of you. And then you are they will just be pumping it up, pumping it up, pumping it up. Look, when I was younger, I could experiment because I was young. And there's nothing wrong. You're a young man. Experiment is part of life. But don't try to experiment as an old man. So, as you see me, so I don't do crypto, I don't do forest. It has nothing to do with anything. I have, I have already found what is working for me. I have real estate all over the world. I'm making money every month in dollars and pounds. Why should I risk it at this age? Because somebody said there's one crypto. No problem. You can crypto night your life. You are, too, you are still young. If you do crypto from 17 to 22, you make money, you lose it at 23. You can cry till you are 25. You start again. You make again. You lose. No problem. But why would I go into that? So am I saying crypto is fake? No. Am I saying forex is fake? No. But majority of many of you that are doing that, you are looking for quick fixes. You will do better with land banking. To just buy land and leave it there. Hello? I have billions in real estate. And I mean billions. And I'm not talking Naira. So, so I'm a rich man for real. It's not by faith. <laughs> Hello? But guess what? Those things happen over 20 something years. Hello? There are lands that I bought. I have properties now, millions of dollars, pounds. But when I bought it, it was not one million pounds. It was not three million dollars. But I have waited for 17 years, 18 years. Do you understand now? I bought land here. The one I have here is big money. I bought it. 
I have land in South Africa. I have land everywhere. So if I go into a country and I buy land, every year the land will continue to grow, whether I do something or not. It's called land banking. So wealth creation does what? It takes time. So don't be in a hurry. All this gri 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 gri. You graduate in January. You want to get a job in February. Buy a car in March. Marry in April. Become a father in May. Go to Canada in June. And become a billionaire in July. What's your problem? Where do you get all this covetous nature from? So you get into all kinds of nonsense. And after you now be blaming God. Hello? So wealth creation takes time. So if you start early in your twenties, so many of you that are sitting down here right now, I'm seeing a lot of young people, and I'm happy. I think some of you brought your children, like you. You see, this is your dad. This is one of the best decisions. So listing now, yeah. <laughs> so you can start now, so that when they give you pocket money, they give you money, you start saving, so that by the time you are your father's age, you see, you see, she's looking at you. Already they give pocket money, you start saving. So by the time you are his age, you will be richer than him. <laughs> Hello. So all you young people now, think about it. They are buying iPhone. They are buying this. Who did, what's wrong? Do you know that many of these mobile phones you are buying, there's no difference? They are all produced in the same factory. They just give them different labels. Hello? And then you are, what do you do with the phone to make calls? Nobody's even calling you. <laughs> you don't even have any friend. You are now going to Facebook. Hello? Uh, you know, we went to school together. Yeah, in Bogatanga, it's me. Uh, this is my number. Call me. Nobody is calling you. You don't have anybody calling you. And your iPhone. Hello? Then you are in one room. Your wife is in the kitchen. You are calling her. Babe, is the food ready? So mobile phone has become intercom. Just have a basic phone that works. Hello? Because most of the features in that phone you bought, you have not used 70% of it. And yet, that's what you are paying for. Hello? Look. Many of you don't understand. As I am, I understand this thing, you know. I understand it for you. I went to Dubai, and someone came to see me in the hotel. And he came, he said, ah, sir, I see that you like this hotel. That, but there are five-star hotels. So I asked, her, uh, I asked him, I said, five-star. I said, sit down. <laughs> no, because I wanted to, I said, so what is five-star? Who is the person determining the star? I said, because that's how you people fall into five stars. So who is the person? What is the okay? So tell me five, four, three, two, one. What's the difference of the stars? So he was looking. I said, let me help you. I say there is one thing that is common to every hotel. It's a place to sleep and wake up. One star as bed. <laughs> five star as bed. Every other thing you are paying for is useless. You are paying for swimming, swimming pool. I say, so I can't swim. So why should I go and be paying <laughs> for five star? Because they have swimming pool when I cannot swim. These are the things that you don't know. I said, they have gym. How many times? Do I? I'm here to preach for three days. I will, I will not even be able to have time to go to the gym. You are paying for things. That, you say, hey, breakfast. I don't eat breakfast most of the time. Do you understand? So at the end of the day, before I wake up, they have finished breakfast downstairs. You still do. So why will you waste your life just to do like this? That five star out there. And then there is an hotel of $60 that you just sleep and wake up and you secure your life. You go and pay $300 per night. That's how many of you are ruining away your life and you are saying it's village people. Hello? So many times you have been programmed for poverty. Because people have imputed things into your mind and then they will start making you feel inferior. Now we are in 2024 now. Do you know that from October they have been releasing 2024 car? 2024 fashion in 2023. Now, by October, now they will start 2025. You start feeling inferior. Once you see the advert, you start feeling like a nobody. You start feeling as if you are a nobody. Ooh, I don't have time for that. Hello? So, wealth creation does what? It takes time. If you do the right thing, no matter what, you are consistent, within 20 years, you will be shocked at what will happen in your life. Have you forgotten you used to use Blackberry? You remember? Blackberry board. Where is Blackberry now? That money you used to buy Blackberry then could have bought you an acre of land. By now, you have at least 300,000 Ghana City. 
But now, you have Blackberry is gone now. You have done three laptops. Now you are in iPhone 15. One plot you don't have. So when you are here now, is to begin to now think of how to make adjustments. And you know you people, ah, <laughs> Ghana, you people like wasting money. Beria. Beria in Ghana is as if there is something they, it's as if they cost you people with Beria and uh, 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 what's the other weddings and everything. People are just, you see, Ghana, yeah, they even pay people for crying you know, in Ghana, you know. You will need deliverance. They even do arm bill, arm bill, and do adverts to come and cry in a barrier that they don't know the person. They now say, if you just want normal crying, this is the price. <laughs> if you want wailing, this is the price. If you want deep, you know, conversion, <laughs> this is the price. Ghana. Hey! I've been coming here. You know I'm a Ghanaian. I have resident permit. So no, I'm, we're all here together. <laughs> I've been coming here since 1992. Now listen, listen, listen. Even in the coffin, have you seen the coffin you people have? You people create coffee, helicopter coffin, aeroplane coffin, biro coffee. I say, who did this to these people? What is all this nonsense? Everybody will wear black. A man was in the hospital here in Ghana. And... They did not come to pay his hospital bill. He's here in Accra. So the guy was arrested in the hospital here. Nobody came to pay. After staying for like two months, he said, you know what, doctor? If you need the money, <coughs> just tell my family that I have died. <laughs> that money will show up. And true, the guy, they say, ah, they have died. The next day, hey, 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 people got that. They have sold uniform in 24 hours. Hey! Ashanti region, voter region. People came from everywhere. They don't so close for dead man. They say, ah, before you can take the dead body away, the hospital be is that 6,000. Yeah, no, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. This is money. Mary has come. Sharp, sharp. Then when they paid the hospital, the guy came out. <laughs> say, I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> Hello? So don't be in a hurry. Many of us that you see today, we did not start yesterday. It has taken 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. So wealth creation does what? It takes time. So avoid, you see, because when you are in that get rich quick, that's when you become susceptible to a lot of schemes. Number six, there are ingredients for wealth creation. There are ingredients for wealth creation. Now, the ingredients for wealth creation, they are called laws, laws of wealth creation, principles of wealth creation, keys to wealth creation, secrets to wealth creation, strategy. There are all kinds of names, but they are ingredients. Now, please listen to this as I help you understand. In order for you to create wealth, there are different ingredients that you have to put together. Those are called laws, principles, secrets. And it takes time to begin to study all of them and put them together. So, for instance, there are people that are very good cooks, but they can only cook some particular set of meals. And even though they are very good cooks, when you now tell them to come and cook another set of meals, they have to learn the ingredients and the rudiment and the process. So when it comes to wealth creation, there are ingredients. They are all listed here that will help you to be able to create wealth. Once you understand that ingredient, it will go a long way in helping you. Now let me, let me show you something. If you meet with a chef, maybe you go to a meeting, you go to a restaurant, you go somewhere, and then you enjoy a nice meal. And then you love the meal. By virtue of the fact that you are matured, you have a good palate, and you've probably been in the kitchen, you can assume the ingredients and say, I can see oil, I think there will be salt. You can assume, but you may, not, you may be wrong. But now, if you now want to prepare that meal, you can't prepare that meal by assumption. So you now get to the chef and say, please, can you help me with this? Can I have your ingredients? Now, the chef can write out the ingredients and hand it over to you, but that still does not mean you can cook, yeah. even though you know the ingredients. 
Now, the chef can go a step further and tell you the process and say, you know what, put this, cook it for two, 250 watt, and then after five minutes, put this, put that. That's what a cookbook is. But people have used cookbook and nothing came out of it. But there's another realm where you cannot say, you know what, mentor me. And the chef will take you into his kitchen and lead you and guide you on how to use and apply the ingredients. That is the missing link in the life of many people. Many of you have read all the books in this world. There is nothing I'm saying that you don't know. But you are still poor. Why? Because you don't know how to combine the ingredients. You think that because you have the chef's menu, you are okay. And you are not ready to get connected to the chef so that he can hold you by the hand. You see, when someone tells you what to do, before they came to the conclusion that that is what should be done, they have made mistakes and they have done a lot of experiments that led them to that conclusion. Even though they are giving you the final answer, in order to arrive at that final answer, you will now start making mistakes. But they won't write that in the book. <laughs> That's why many of you have read books, you practice it, it did not work. And you are now saying, oh, this is fake, it's a scam. It's not a scam. You are not connected. <laughs> so, when you get into the world of finances, one thing I will advise every one of you to do is to get a mentor. Try as much as possible to connect to people within your environment that are rich, that are wealthy, that are doing well, that can guide you. If you are in a career path, have career mentors. If you are in a particular business, go to people that have started the business before you. Have mentors in those areas. So that when you get into trouble, you eat a snack, you eat a place where you are confused, they can help you and say, no, 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 ah, when, ah, that's, don't worry, do it this way, do it this way. So there are what? Ingredients for wealth creation. They call it principles. Now listen to this before I move to the next point. The ingredients for wealth creation are universal. They are called principles. But even though the principles are universal, the application of those principles, they are personal, contextual, and geographical. Because if you have gone around the world, rice is rice. Have you noticed that? Rice is rice. Bread is bread. <laughs> so, you have all kinds of rice. But rice is rice. To cook rice, it's cook rice. It's the same thing. Except you now want to go into different variation, fried rice, jollof rice, coconut rice. Rice is rice. But you see, even though rice is rice, bread is bread. When you now get into your own kitchen, depending on the, whether you are using stove or gas or firewood, depending on the size of your pots, depending on a lot of factors, you will have to still go through a different process for your own rice, even though it is rice. Hello? So that's the same thing about wealth creation. The principles are universal. But in order to apply those principles, number one, they are personal. You have to look at your own personal life and how it relates to that principle. Number two, they are contextual. You have to look at your own context. Because, listen, if everybody here now, let me assume now that I come here now and I say, you know what? I'd like to help everybody. Every one of you, I'm giving you one million dollars. Now, the very minute I give you the one million dollars, how much did I give everybody? One million dollars. The very minute I give you that one million dollars, in less than one second, you will not all have one million dollars. Why? Somebody is owing 100,000. So when I give you one million, minus what you owe, you are at 900 already. If you are a tighter, another hundred gone, you are at 800. Are you seeing now? Even though I gave all of you the same thing. But if I give all of you one million and somebody already has one million, it's already at two million. So there is no way you can say somebody is your mate. Then anyway, we are in the same class. We are in, no, stop. Or the, no, nobody is your mate. You are in a class all by yourself. Face your life. And don't compare yourself with anybody. So the principles will meet you based on your context. So it's, the, it's not the principle that is the problem. But once the principle lands, it is... Personal, contextual, and geographical. Because if I give you one million dollars now, you don't spend dollar here. You have to change it to Ghana City. By the time you go through that exchange rate, stories that touch are started. Somebody else that is going to another country to change it, 
Before you know it, the one million dollar is breaking into geographical currencies. Hello? Number seven. There are vehicles for wealth creation. There are vehicles for wealth creation. If you are going to create wealth, the same way you all came here from different routes, there are vehicles. Now, let me ask a question. And please, before you answer the question, think before you answer. The first step in examination success is understanding the question. That's the first step. To pass any exam, once you go to an exam hall, the question is, do you understand the question? Because state five characteristics. What are they asking for? Five characteristics. State five stages of they are not asking for characteristics. They ask. So if you don't understand the question, you're already in trouble. Hello? And one of the things that people don't even understand is, once they give you an exam sheet, I'm just helping because I see students here, before you start reading the question, read the instruction. Because instruction may say, answer four out of ten. And because you are so spiritual, you're on fire. <laughs> You now answer eight. <laughs> and the instruction may be answer only question nine. But they want to know whether you have attention to details. And the instruction may be answer all questions with a pencil. <laughs> and then you carry by because it is so let me now go to the question. Are you ready? Is it possible? Is it possible to trek from Accra to Lagos, Nigeria? Yes or no? Yes. It's possible. Now, so, if I want to go to Lagos town, I therefore have options. Option one, I can fly. One hour. Option two, I can drive. Depending on a lot of factors. Maybe 12 hours. Or one day. But I can decide to trek. And I may never arrive. <laughs> Depending on all factors. So please. Listen to this now. If I decide to fly. To Lagos. Somebody else decides to drive to Lagos. Somebody else decides. To trek to Lagos. Who will get to Lagos first? The fly. Now, is that person arriving in Lagos because they are anointed? Because they are more intelligent? Because they don't have enemies? Because they are more educated? Why are they arriving in Lagos first? Simply because of the vehicle they use. Now, the person that is trekking, even though he has done 100 days fasting and prayer, will he arrive first? No. The person that went by air can be a fornicator and an adulterer. He will still arrive first. The person trekking can be holy and will still be last. Why? Because in this world, life is governed by principles. Hello? When God created this world, that atheist was created by God. That unbeliever was created by God. And as a creator, he has a responsibility to his creation. Whether they serve him or not, whether they believe in him or not, he has a responsibility to them. And that is what he puts in place as principles for the perpetuation of his creation. And those principles have nothing to do with redemption. Hello? So, if you are now not applying those principles, and you think that just because you are redeemed, you can now uh, you know, disobey the principle, you will suffer for it. So, to become wealthy, there are vehicles. So anyone that is relying on salary alone, you are trekking. Are you seeing it now? You are trekking. So why will you choose to trek when you can fly? Hello? A young man came to see me now. When we were on break, I was standing here. So he came. And he said, he bought um, something, came, saw me, and he said, ah, that, uh, 
he, he, he heard me saying that I have a house in Kaswa and that uh, do I have a generator in that house that is into the business of generator so I looked at I said in Ghana where there is light you are selling generator <laughs> hello I said I don't need generator there is light stable light here hello even if there is problem of light never reach to go invest that kind of money to be put in that so you might need to do for other business to do because someone in Ghana selling generator is like somebody in America selling generator. It's not village people. You are in the wrong business. You can fast and pray. Except you want the old grid to fail. For people to start patronizing you. So how many generators can you sell in a country where there is light? Are you saying now that it's not demon now? It's, not, it's just understanding the market. So it's okay, okay. So where, what other business can we come and say it's not about what business? Is there a market for it? Is there a growing market? Because some people now, you say you work in oil company and you are a full attendant at the petrol station. That's not a career. When you travel abroad, you fuel your car by yourself. You go to the pump by yourself. You pay by yourself. To now say I'm in a fuel attendant, I'm waiting for promotion. Oh Lord, promote me. Where? AI is about to ruin your life. That job, you will still lose it. So your promotion will start with you losing that job, becoming jobless so that your brain can now think of something else to do. Hello? So when we are talking about world question, there are vehicles. And if you get that one, all those things, I know the school of money is the, is the main. This one is just a specialized book for career people. But the school of money, everything is inside. So now, I listed all the vehicles in the school of money. Listen and listen well. So if you are trekking, that means you are a salary now. So stop depending on salary alone. What I've done with the new book is to say that as a career person, you can also create wealth without having to leave your job but what you need to do is what this book is all about to help you know how you can be a career person you are a career professional and you still be able to create wealth by doing other things apart from yourself so those are all the things and if you have not been around i've been in this church here for two three days now i did a series thursday and yesterday on those 10 points i think i did like five four five on how to create wealth as a career person so i've dealt with some of that you can get it on their youtube channel uh, or their Facebook and go and watch it. And then, um, if you buy the book, I already have part one to four. So there's a link in the book that connects you to the video, part one to four, and it connects you to the audio that reviews the entire book. So, please, there are vehicles that will lead you to the worldly place. So the best thing to do now is to sit down and check what you are doing. So if you are trekking, start looking into how you can move from trekking to maybe driving. Hello, and then you can now begin to look into how you can get a flight. Number discovering the pathway to wealth and embarking on the journey guarantees that you will arrive at the world place. Discovering the pathway to wealth and embarking on the journey guarantees that you will get to the world of place. Now, please listen. 1,000 good intentions are not as powerful as one action. 1,000 good intentions are not as powerful as one action. An object will remain stagnant until a force is applied. Your life will remain the same way it is until you do something meaningful about it. The journey of a thousand miles does not begin with a step. The journey of a thousand miles begins with a step that is taken. So until you take that step, the journey has not begun. Many of you have started the journey inside. Ah, are we, are we, are we? I plan to, I hope to, I intend to. And that's where you are for 10 years. You have been planning, hoping, and intending. It's time to give attention to your intention and take the step. Hello? Look, listen. You know why many of you have not done anything? Because you think that your little step is not powerful enough. But one is bigger than zero. Hello? Now, think about what I'm about to say. A tree does not make a forest. But every forest begins with a tree. So who told you you are not going to be the pioneer of the new forest? 
You are waiting for forest to join in order for you to believe that you are important. Take the step and be the first tree and start your own forest. Because everything you are laying claim on today, somebody started it. So, let me give you, let's do practical. Is there any medical doctor, lawyer, or accountant here today? Medical doctor, lawyer, accountant. Anybody like that here? You're a medical doctor, you're an accountant. Okay, so please, what was it? Let's, no, want to learn. There's, it's not a difficult question. We just want to learn. So, are you a doctor, lawyer, accountant? You're a nurse. A doctor, so please stand up. Now, so you, to be a doctor, you went to school, and then the test told you you are a doctor. So, the first doctor in the world, just, you know, we are just thinking, the first doctor in the world, what school did that doctor go to? <laughs> are you getting it now? Now, you now, some people sat down, they put subjects together, created an entire curriculum to tie you down for seven years. And say they will give you a certificate. The first person that was a doctor who taught him which curriculum did he use? So somebody was the one that started this journey to say, Look, I'm going to be a doctor. And I'll start and I'll start bringing people. So what am I saying? You can start your own. God bless you. Do you understand now? You can start your own. So don't think that you must follow what everybody has been doing. Sit down and start. So when you live here now, look. Many of the things I'm saying, to many of you is new. To many of you is not new. You've read books, you have heard it. But why has it not produced? Think. Because you have not practiced it. You are not consistent. When I came in contact with these things in 1998, I started practicing it and I'm still practicing it. Within three years, I saw a church and said, hey, is this easy? I didn't know it was that easy. Why? Because I didn't practice it. Hello? Now, let me help you. I'm not knocking religion, but let me just help you to see some of the things. How many of you are here? You believe in tithing. Okay. So, what is tithe? 10%. So, how many of you have been doing that for like 10 or 15 years? Okay. So, that means that every income you have made in your life for the past 10 to 15 years, 10% of it has been given to God, your church. So question, are you rich now? Hello? Are you, no, I'm going somewhere. You see, that 10% you were given, you should have also saved 10%. Are you seeing what I'm saying now? You see, when you come to church, the entire 100% belongs to God, not 10. But he says, give me 10. Why? For two reasons. Number one, as an act of worship. Number two, as an acknowledgement of the fact that I am your source. So he said, Lord, you give it to me. This just to honor you. Now, are you ready? Between 90 and 10, which one is more? 90. So you gave 10, but by financial illiteracy, you use less than 90. So because you did not know what to do with the 90, nothing has changed. So in that same Bible, where God told you to bring 10%, in that same Bible, he says what? Save. Why did you obey one? You didn't obey the second one. Hello? So if you have been obeying the full gospel, as you are doing 10% tight, 10% service, 10% tight, 10% service, things will have been different. But you know why many of you have been tightening? Because in your subconscious mind, the religious software is telling you, if I tight like this, I will prosper. So it's actually laziness, selfishness, and 419. You are a fraud. So you are not tightening because you really love God or you have understanding. The tightening is like, ah, if I just do this one like this, I can live anywhere. God will just bless me. And you have been waiting. <laughs> are you seeing now? Because if you really understand, you will know that the entire 100% belongs to God. You will not have been wasting the other 90 on things you have been wasting it on. Hello? You are using God. And God knows that you are trying to use him. Hello? So it's time to do what? To act. So once you know what to do and you start doing it, it will help you. I save every season. 
I don't, I'm not, I don't, add, I don't earn salary, so I, 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 I operate on income. But any money I make, I save. Any money I make, it's a law. It's not my, it's not. So I have money everywhere. Hello? I'm in Ghana now. Every money that will come here is not living with me. I'm going to pay it into my account. When they are much, I'll build another house in Ghana. Every country I go to, I open accounts. Once I discover it's a country I want to play, I open accounts. And any money that comes from that country stays in that country. Every, if I go to London and they give me money, it won't leave London. I'll pay it into my account. America. So when I want to go to America, I don't need money to go. I'll just carry my card. Hello? And I move. When I was coming here, all I did was to carry dollar and carry my Ghana card. When I finish, when I get home, I drop it. When I'm going to America, in another three weeks, I carry American card. I won't spend Ghana money there. I'll go and spend the American money in America. So I'm not telling you what I do. This is what I practice. Hello? I save, save, save. My wife will say, hey, ah, hey, but ah, why will they have money? We have all this money. And hey, you just be saving. Hey, I know, I understand, but hey, let's do this thing. I say, babe, how old are you? <laughs> I say, I'm 10 years older than you. I have seen life. Hello? I said, when you are 10 years older, I will remind you of what you are saying now. I said, you are, you are re- what you are saying is real to you. I'm not denying your reality, but my reality is not your reality. Hello? I have an 11-year-old boy now. Hello? My first child that I gave birth to is 26 years old. Second child, 24 years old. Then life happens. And I have 11 years old. So that means that add another 14 to that guy's life. That's when he'll be 25. So in the next 40, add 14 years to my life. That's why I did 70. So at the age of 70, you want me to be running around looking for money? No. Do you get it now? So I will not behave like every other person. My friends know that I'm rich. Ah, you this rich man, you are so stingy. I say, no problem, I'm stingy. Is your, I, don't, I'm not, I don't need an award from you. All these people calling me stingy. All their children have grown. Their children are working. They are grandparents. Me, I still have 11 year old. I will now deceive myself. And be saying we are all friends. And be following them. When I still have university fee to pay for the small boy. He's about to enter year one in secondary school now. That's five years, six years before he enter university. Do you know what that school fees is in dollar? I will now be following you people. I face my reality. Hello? But my wife changed. After COVID, she has changed. <laughs> because when COVID happened and we're locked down, we had maybe like 23 people locked down in my house. Do you know what it means to be feeding people every day in COVID? Do you know? But money was flowing. Then one day my wife came into the room and just knelt down. I said, stand up, babe, what's happening? He said, no, I just want to thank you for not being an hypocrite. I want to thank you for practicing what you preach. I want to thank you for being a good husband. I said, ah, where is all this one coming from? He said, ah, you know, I won't say you. I said, see, but if you have not been saving. See, when this thing started, we thought it was going to be like two weeks. He said, now it's three months, and we are still eating. Everything is fine. I said, thank you. I said, now you get what I was trying to say. <laughs> Now, my wife is saving money like mad. I say, hey, you too. <laughs> so many times, you need life to teach you lesson. But don't wait for life to teach you. Learn from this one. If you start it, it's only a matter of time. I'm telling you. It's not as difficult as you think. You know why many of you, let me help you see perspective. If you start doing some things now, it will take 10 years for you to see the result. But that's the problem. Many of you are not ready to wait for 10 years. But let me tell you how to wait for 10 years. Look back 10 years. What have you achieved? Look back. The last 10 years, all things work together. That's the scripture you're quoting. All things work together. All things work together. 10 years of your life is gone. So if you have started 10 years ago, by now, you will have reached. So start now. Hello? Even if you need to go back to school. You say, ah, but you don't understand. I'm already 35. If I go to school now, before I finish, I'll be 43. Uh, you will still be 43 without education. 
Start now. Number nine. Wealth creation is all about maximizing opportunities. Wealth creation is all about maximizing opportunities. Now, let me, let me say some things about opportunities. Opportunities are ladders. Opportunities are steps. Opportunities are doorways. Opportunities are contacts, connections that changes things in your life. It is better to be prepared, waiting for opportunities, than for opportunities to come and meet you unprepared. Anybody you see in this world that is rich and wealthy, if you sit down with them, they will tell you, this opportunity came, that opportunity came, that opportunity came. <coughs> Their journey is filled with opportunities and connections. Oh, this person helped me. That person gave me this information. That person supported me. That's what life is all about. So if you want to create wealth, you have to be very, very sensitive to opportunities. You have to be what? Sensitive to opportunities. My greatest asset in life right now, when you talk of material things, are my books, my intellectual properties. I've written over 100 books, translated in different languages. That's my greatest asset. Next to that is my real estate portfolio all over the world. But I can tell you the majority of the real estate that I have right now, if I tell you how much I spent to buy those things, you will be amazed that, ah, uh ah. -uh. I have houses in America. The highest money I have ever paid to buy a house in America, highest, is $30,000. $30,000. I bought houses in America for $12,000, $14,000. In the days of the economic crunch in 2008, 2009, between 2009 and 2011, myself and my team, we bought 44 properties in the U.S. None of it was above $30,000. And I was telling people to come and buy. They said I'm a fraud. Because then we're buying properties in the U.S. for 12,000, 13,000, 15,000. And that was equivalent to about 5 million naira in my Nigerian currency. And you could not get a plot of land for 5 million in some places in Nigeria. So it was difficult for them to comprehend. That how can you go to a whole America, buy a whole house? And the money, well, this guy is a fraud, all these pastors. I did seminars in hotels in Lagos, Abuja, Portacot. Not one person, one, not one customer bought, not one. They were insulting me all over that this guy is a fake. How can he just take people's money? He wants to run away. I had pastor friends that I told about the opportunity that they are selling auction, auction, their houses for auction. They did the answer. They said, ah, I want to be a bishop. I want to build this, I want to do that. But those opportunities that I maximized then, the houses, the houses I have in America, I've been collecting rent every month for 14 years. Without faith, tenant has not left. Every month, dollar, every month. So when dollar is going AYA, it's not my business. It's not. Hello? It's painful for those that will suffer it, but it's not my business. When the money comes together again, I buy another one. So please, when I bought the land that I bought, here in Accra. I've been coming to Accra, gathering money. Then one day, I got a call from one of the fathers in the land. Hello, is that Tolumunde Manuel? My name is Tony. Ah, bless you, sir. Bless, you know, when the father said, I was shaking. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I just saw you on our station right now. I like what you're saying. I like you. I like you. I like you. Say so that this book, School of Money, is in Ghana. Okay, send them to me. I'm sending somebody to Nigeria. They need, well, you need to come. You need to come to Ghana. You need to come to Ghana. Ah. So they sent somebody to Nigeria. Came to my office. So Papa said, would you come and see you? You need to come to Ghana. He wants you to come and do this, do that. I said, ah, this great man of God, me? Ah, I said, okay. <laughs> so I came. So he said he wanted me to come every three months to train and to see that they want to, that is all this deliverance prophetic, he wants to change, the, that, that he wants people to come to this. I ah, say, no problem, sir. 
But listen. So I came. First meeting, Wednesday. Thursday. Friday. The old place was rocking. Then on Saturday, because I told them, I said, look, these things we are doing, sir, that the way it works, that preaching does not help people, is teaching. That's what we we'll preach to inspire them, but let's do a whole day that I will really give them some secret. They can ask questions. We can... So on Saturday, they now planned a whole Saturday, six hours. How much did they charge? 100 Ghana cities. How much? So when I came, I said, sir, 100. That is too small. That is better. That we should make it like $1,000. So that they can, I say, no, just want to help them. I say, but you are giving them food. You are giving them everything. My people, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we had well, somewhere in the region of a combination of over 20,000 people in that meeting. On Saturday, we're less than 500. Yeah, true life story. We're less than 500 on Saturday. The real day. That is why I hate religion. Because many of you are just joking around. You are not serious with your life. On Saturday, when we do less than 500 people, I said, ah. And according to the plan, they said he doesn't leave his service on Sunday for people. It's only big, big people that preach. So when we finish, he said, can you do first service tomorrow morning? I said, no problem, sir. If you want me to do anything you want, sir. No problem. So the person that came to Nigeria to see me, and I said, ah. That they say, I'm doing first service to, tomorrow. He said, ah, you, first service, Sunday morning. He told you that. I said, yeah, that's what he said. He said, ah, that you must have touched a nerve. That it's only these people, these people, these people that preach here on Sunday morning. Ah. I said, well, that's what he said. He said, because the second service, there are some dignitaries that are coming. Da, da, da. I said, no problem. By the time I finish first service, he said, you have to do every service all. But I'm going somewhere. I want to bring two things out for you. Two things. On Sunday morning, while I was preaching, I felt led to raise an offering. And I raised an offering of $1,000 per person. To God, over 300 people came out. That was $3.7 million. How much is that? Am I wrong? That's over $3 million in one service. They came out. At that point, I got angry. So I said, come, hold on. I said, hold on, please. This is it's verifiable. It's on, it's on video. Because they came, I said, okay, bring oil. We're going to just touch. Because I thought they would just, I would just anoint few people. When I saw that, I said, if I start anointing 300 people, the service is over. I will not do second service. I said, hold on. I said, please, I beg you. I said, this is the problem I have with church. I said, where were you people yesterday? Where were you people from Wednesday? Now you are giving 1,000, thinking that because I'm a rich man, when I anoint you, you become rich. I say, you can't be rich by $1,000. Never. So you can carry your money now and go and sit down with your poverty. I say, I, I, you can't, if they are not going to invite me, let them not invite me again. I'm not going to be involved in all this religious nonsense. I'm only raising this one because I'm led. But seeing you people now, I'm not led again. I said, because this is why you people ruined this thing. Why are you coming out to give a thousand when you were not here yesterday to learn what will change your life? Then the papa came, took the microphone and said, this is, see, have I not been telling you people? You see, you people are the ones that will make us to be sinning. <laughs> you will not follow the truth. No, it was an amazing. And then, when I finished, it was a good meeting. So they gave me money. Big money. Ah, so when I collected the money, I told myself, <clears throat> You don't have land in Ghana. You don't have house in Ghana. It's not every time you see this kind of money. Oh. That is the highest money you have ever collected since you have been coming to Ghana. It's better to tie it down. So I called Dotun. Thank God you are here. Please stand up. That's the man that got me my land. So I called him. I said, ah, see how much they gave me. Oh, that please take the money. Keep for me. I need to open accounts that this money, I must buy land. That's how he got the land. He's the one that built my house. I came there every three months. for All the money they gave me is what I used to buy land and build a house. 
over a one year period. Now listen, they don't invite me anymore. <laughs> now, if I have been collecting the money and wasting it, thinking that it will be forever, I will not know that the season will come when they will say, oh, this guy has finished the job that we sent him to do. Because now, they have bank. Everything I taught them, they now have bank. They have restaurant. They have, they have multiple businesses. Everything I told them, they did, and it's now working. So I finished my job. But that's how many of you have finished job, and your life finished with it. Because what came from it, you have not tied down. I, I have houses in the UK, cash. I bought a house in the UK about 11 years ago. 200,000 pounds cash. Where did I see the money? I didn't steal it. I wrote the School of Money book. And I sent the book to my friend in South Africa, David Molako. I said, guy, I've written this book. That This book, I want to change the whole world. That's why I'm going to be launching this book in every country. So I want you to help me coordinate the launching of this book in South Africa. Let's fix a date. Tell me how much it will cost. I want to come and launch the book. Then I get an email. And you know how you will read an email and you think it's a fraud. So I got an email. And he said, Dear Olumide Emmanuel, we saw your book. Dr. John Maxwell has asked that we invite you to join the faculty of John Maxwell because he's coming on tour of Africa and he wants you to join him to go on tour of Africa to speak. So I'm like, ah, Me, who am I? John Maxwell, our mentors. <laughs> so, I, so I didn't reply the something. Because I can't reply. You know, Nigeria, there's so money for one night so that they will not go and hack your computer. <laughs> so I called the guy. I said, ah, Molako, what's happening? He said, oh, you've got in the last year. Yes. He said, oh, you don't know. I'm the president of John Maxwell Company Africa. I said, I didn't know. He said, when I got your book, he said, we're already in a meeting discussing how John Maxwell will come, will go to African countries and train leaders, talk to president, and do this. So, but they were thinking of, so when I saw the book, I showed it, say, what? Is this guy in America? In America? He said, no, he said, he said, Nigeria? He wrote this book there. Why are we bringing somebody from America? This local content. They can relate to him more because he's from there. Bring him on board if he's available. That's how they bring me on board, though. $150,000. Hello? So I went round. That's the first time I entered private jet in my life. <laughs> I was on CBN 20, that was 2012, 2013. We're going from country to country, different countries, speaking to president. Everywhere when they talk, so let's welcome Lumide Emmanuel. Guess what? Every one of them were speaking for two hours. They give me only 30, 30 minutes because it's a small, this black man. It's my 30 minutes that became the breakthrough of the whole meeting. He said, that man, that man, that man, that's he, he's the one we want. They were asking for me. They didn't ask for all the people that thought they were the great people. Because when favor speaks, it speaks. So when I got the money, I told myself, it's not every time you can gather $150,000, $200,000 cash in your life. This is an opportunity. Tie it down. I move. I said, I say, no, no, no. I, help me pay it into London account. The thing landed. I bought a house. That house that I bought for 200,000 is worth almost 500,000 pounds now. It's still there cash. And guess what? I've been collecting rent since then. So when you see me now, yeah, you don't know how they get all their money. It's because you don't understand. That's why I'm teaching you now. Many of you, this thing I'm saying now, many of you have had opportunity, but you use the money to do wedding. <laughs> now the wedding is over. And you are poor with your girl. Hello? You are doing marriage. People are sewing clothes. And the clothes is older than the marriage. People get married in three months, they are divorced. You're not be telling us, eh, people now, you need to be sensitive. Nobody should be wearing that cloth anymore. Don't be wearing the clothes. You'll be reminding me of my mental health. You are reminding me of the broken. Uh, so, we paid for the cloth. Oh. You didn't give it to us free. Whether your wedding is over or over, I will wear the cloth until I'm tired. Hello? So, what was your opportunity? So, in closing, covenant compliance 
Wealth creation is all about covenant compliance. Since this is not a church, church, church issue, I will not spend too much time on that. But let me tell you something. In this world, you are either in the secret cult or you are in the secret place. Everybody is using something. Everybody. Just be sure that what you are using is the right one. Because if you are not using something, somebody is using something against you. So, if you like, be arguing about tithes, be arguing about first fruits. All the tithes you refuse to pay, where are they now? You are still poor. If 90% did not change your life, the 10% will not make a difference. But when you give God his rightful place, it will cause things to work in your favor. And it will remove evil far from you. So I pray that all that I have shared with you today, the grace to walk in it will rest upon you. And that not too long from now, I will meet you at the airport, in the boardroom, in the business class lounge, on the plane, and you will walk up to me and say, Sir, February 2024, I was at the School of Money Summit, but today, see what the Lord has done. God bless you. We're going to go on another short 10 minutes break and then the meeting is over. If you want to go, you can go after this time. But if you want to stay, I will take questions for just 30 minutes. So if you have any question, write it down. Bring the questions. We're not going to give anybody microphone. Write it down, bring the questions. But while we're bringing that, they will go on break. Why are we going on break? Two reasons. You want to ease yourself. You want to use the restroom. You go do that. Number two, Go and get the materials. The pathway to wealth. The pathway to wealth. It has CD and DVD. It's just 200 Ghana CDs. This is the latest one. How to create wealth as a career person. There's a link to the audio. And there's also a link to the four-part video. In, in there. That's 300. And this one is called the School of Money. It's 350. There's a CD and a DVD in there. So, all together, 950. But you can go for this one, the Wealth Creation Master Pack. The three books and five other books are there. So, we have Bridging the Gap Between the Rich and the Poor is in here. 50 Common Money Mistakes to Avoid is in here. How to Create Your Success Story is in here. How to Increase Your Value in the Marketplace is in here. All these books are all wealth creation materials that will help you. And then with 26 audio programs. And this one is over 4,000 Ghana CDs content. But with 1,000, you get this and you can download it on your system and use it on multiple devices and it will help you. So, we'll go on break for 10 minutes. And if you have any question, write it down and come and drop it so that I can collect the questions together. So, thank you. We'll be back in 10 minutes for questions. God bless you all. Those of you that want me to autograph, you can bring the book now. But if you want, if you have a question, you can also come and drop it now. I am weak. Hold me with thy power.
can come in now. I'm going to rush through this session because we're already out of time and I want to um, see how we can maximize the time we have lost. I believe we've had um, an amazing time, so let's just go. So the first question is, what is your view on good debt versus bad debt? Now, most of the time the understanding that people have about debt is that debt is bad. And nobody should go into debt or be in debt. But if you understand the way the economics of nations work, you realize that many nations are operating a credit debt economy. Especially when you go into the capitalist system of operation. And that's why there is good debt and there is bad debt. So good debt is any money you borrow for leverage, any money you borrow to acquire an asset that can fund the cost of the loan and still give you something extra. And that's why you see people talk about buying a house using the mortgage system. So if you borrow money to invest, you borrow money to acquire an asset, and that asset can pay for the cost of the debt, then that is good debt. If you borrow money for liabilities and you end up losing money because that is bad debt. So, yes, I believe in good debt. I've leveraged good debt on different aspects of life. And if you understand how to use it, it's one of the new rules of money. Second one says, I need advice on how to build a house for my family. We recently won a legal battle on a land litigation and a in, at a prime location. Should we sell the land and buy another at a less prime area or build small, small? Now, when you build a house for your family, it is not necessarily the right kind of asset. Because in the definition of an asset, there are two indices for defining an asset. Number one, an asset is anything that appreciates in value. So, that land itself is an asset. Number two, an asset is anything that produces cash flow. So, that land is already an asset. But if you decide to build on it now, you are going to spend money to build on it. And then you now pack into it. It has become a liability. Because once you pack in, it's an asset in the sense that it's going to continue to appreciate in value. But it will be a liability to you because it won't bring any money. The only thing that will change is your status that you are now a landlord, but you will still be as poor as you used to be with an asset that is not liquid. So, even though you are going to live in that house, if you now need money, you may still be looking for money. So, since it's a prime location, depending on how prime it is, I will advise you to go into a joint venture or to build multiple units. So you can borrow money to build an apartment, 8 unit, 12 units, whatever. Out of the 8, you can sell 4, keep 4, and live in 1. Do you understand? You still own everything. Or you can go into joint venture, you bring the land as an equity. A developer brings the money, they build, you still own the land, and you share the apartment, and you can still be living there and be collecting rent so that you, you and then you can decide to sell and take the money, especially because it's something that came out of litigation. So you might decide to say, to avoid all these litigation and stories, maybe somebody will become a president tomorrow, they will bring, because litigation, until you get to Supreme Court, there is still litigation. So somebody may wake up tomorrow and just say, ah, how did you allow that? My, my, my cousin is now the president, and now that court case will start. So you might decide to ex exit that system and close that chapter. Because if it's in litigation, it's most, li most likely an inheritance. So start your own generation. Sell and go to another area where that's one plot. You can use it to get 10 acres somewhere else. Or you can use it to get one acre here you know, and divide. So those things are things you can look into. And I pray that God will guide you. And so how do you stop money from controlling you? There are myths and saying that money is a spirit. Yeah, money is a spirit, of course. Ah, money is a spirit. <laughs> So money is a spirit. The only way to stop money from controlling you is being connected to the kingdom. 
So let's stop with these ones, no more, so that, because we already have too much from what I'm seeing. So, yes, money, money will control you if you don't understand money. So the first thing is to understand that money is nothing but a tool for the fulfillment of purpose. So when you see money as a servant, as a tool for the fulfillment of purpose, that understanding is what keeps money at bay. So God is your source, but anything can be a resource. So don't embrace the principles and reject the principle, because the principle is more important than the principles. So focus on connecting with God and understanding money so that it will not be able to control you. And the best way to control money is to be a giver. That's one of the reasons why you give. You give to deal with covetousness and to tell money, I'm in control of you. So be giving. As long as you give, you make money, you give money, you realize that money will bow because it's not having control over you. Um... How to become rich as a professional nurse and how to encounter personalities in the nursing field when you don't have anything doing and having different uh, faculties on what you do. That's what the book is all about. So you need to get the book. If you have the book, your answer is in the book. Because it's a combination of a lot of things. It's a combination of a lot of things. So that's what the book is all about, just to help you. Please, I'm 50 years plus and a teacher. Is it too late to start? It's never too late. Whenever you wake up, that's when your morning starts. If you wake up by 6 a.m., is it no morning? If you wake up by 8 a.m., morning. If you wake up by 11.30, morning. Even if you wake up after 12, it's still morning because you are just waking up. So whenever you wake up, that's when your morning starts. If you start now and you spend 20 years to build wealth, by 70, 71. You will be able to live a good life and leave something behind. If you don't start now at 70, you'll still be alive and poor. And you'll be a liability to your children. So, start. It's not too late. What is the ideal distribution of a diversified portfolio, financial assets and fixed assets, and how do you hedge sowings against inflation? Now, okay, savings. Okay, how do you edge savings against inflation? Okay, so let me answer the second one. Then I'll come back to the Please listen attentively to what I'm about to say. Savings is not an investment. It's not an investment. So you are not saving so that you can invest. No. So when you say, how do you edge your savings against inflation? Understand first that you are not saving because it's an investment. There are principles that you need to apply. And savings is one of those principles. And that savings itself is for 11 reasons. So you can go to my YouTube channel. If you are not following me on social media, follow me now. On Instagram, on X, and on Twitter. Um, Twitter is X, and on Facebook. On Instagram and Twitter, which is X, is Olumid Emmanuel. Olumid Emmanuel. Follow me now. Then on Facebook is Emmanuel. Then go to my YouTube channel, Dr. Olumide Emmanuel on YouTube. There is a five-part series there on developing a savings culture. It will tell you everything about savings. It's also in the School of Money book. Now, listen to this, because that's a very, very interesting question. So when you are saving, one of the reasons why you save is to set money aside for what we call rainy day eventualities. That's six months to eight months I mentioned. So that's why you cannot edge it against inflation. Is there so that it will save you because liquidity is very important. But another reason why you save is so that you can use it for investment. So what you now do to edge your savings against in inflation is when you save, apart from those six to eight months money, any other savings you have, put it in an investment or in an asset that will now help you to edge against inflation. And that's where real estate comes in. Land banking is one powerful Thing you can do. So anytime you have money, just go and buy land and keep the, tie the money down in land or go and buy a house, put tenants there or use it to do shortlets or Airbnb and let it tie down your money. When you are ready, you sell it off and move on. Do you understand? So that's how you do that. Now, the first question has to do with diversifying your portfolio. It depends on who you are and it depends on the level with which you operate. So for instance now, I'm a businessman. I'm a pastor. So as a businessman, I have companies. 
So no matter the diversification that I'm doing, my company is my own. So that means I have to still retain something in that company as a company for the company to be a going concern. So, but if you don't have any company and you are just someone that is an investor and you are making money, then you can now divide it in different. So my advice would be number one, let at least 50% of your assets be in real estate. 50%. And that real estate itself, let it be a diversified real estate. So me now, I have properties in about eight countries of the world. Do you understand now? Eight countries. So, one way or the other, everything will. When COVID came, all the properties I have in Nigeria, nobody was paying rent. We forgave them two years' rent. They couldn't pay. Everybody was begging. Sorry, sir. We don't have money. We are not working. Right? But all my properties abroad, they were paying every month. Are you seeing the difference now? Because even the government was giving people money to pay rent. One of my tenants is in jail now. She's serving four years imprisonment. Because the government gave them money. Because in America, they said that we should not evict anybody. So the government paid. She stole the money. She didn't give me the money. I don't know. The money was supposed to be paid into an escrow, which is so I don't know how she connect with the lawyer. She chopped the money. And then by the time I now tried to get the money, of course, you know, COVID backlog. They were now doing court. So they gave us seven months date in court. So she was owing, she 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 ended up owing me for two years and three months. Because seven months we we're going to waiting for court date, she still didn't pay. Then they did court date, they now shifted it again from October that will return in February, she still didn't pay. By the time that was going on, she now went again to the state because now federal paid, she chopped her. The state now said that Biden is now the new president, and Biden has said that that thing should stay. We should not evict anybody. So I still could not evict her because of the law. So she was staying there. They now said that since the federal government has paid, the states will now pay. But they were going to pay that same. So that's said, Look, by now, there she was owing nine months. Now she's owing two years plus. So is it no? They say it's that nine months that they will pay. That if you want to pay, we will now come and apply again for that fresh one again. So we're on this case. At that point, because I'm a Christian, I'm a pastor. So you know. At that point, I said, ah, come, I pay my tithe. This is becoming a devourer. So I got home. I said, babe, this thing, this thing, let's pray. And we held hands together. I said, Father, we hand over this case to you. Have your way. We didn't pray five minutes. We just agreed. Three weeks later, I got a call from my office in Atlanta. They said, sir, is there any problem in any place that they called us that somebody is applying for a money? That they say they are owing you, and that they want to confirm before they give the person the money. Ah, I say who called? I say get the number. I say ah, yeah, somebody is owing us now, but the state is the one. Ah, okay, maybe the state wants to pay. Apparently, the state has paid. She has eaten it. This is actually the third place. She now went to another group again, so they are the ones that now called us to verify. So by the time they down, I said, so well, they say, ah, they say, no, that she's supposed to get a grant from them to pay. She says she's owing, and you are stressing her life. You are threatening her. I said, ah, me, threatening. No, that this is the case. She collected money from government. She didn't pay. We went to say, ah, sorry, excuse me, sir. What did you say? I said, no, federal paid. She didn't. They said, no. How, how was that done? That there's no way she could have access to the money. So how did she, the government pay and you, she got the money? No, the money is supposed to be. I said, yeah, I don't know how they connive. He said, if she has gotten that, I said, so are you not from the state? He said, no. I said, the state now said they will pay. So we are expecting the state to pay. Ah. He said, sorry, hold on, please. What's the house address? What's the, you know, ah. He said, well, from what I'm seeing here, the state has also paid. That now, this is the third money. That is a criminal offense. It's fraudulent against the government. That, do you want to press charge? I say, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I say, I want to press her because I want all my money. She's in jail now, four years imprisonment. Hello? 
How do you want to defraud government? You defraud man of God? You want to defraud government, defraud state? <laughs> so, 50% real estate, 25% in other investments, then 25% cash. 50% real estate, 25% other investments, 25% cash. You can do 30, 30, 10. There are a lot of things. There is no law to this thing. It depends on a lot of us. So, if, for instance, now you are a business person now, and you have your own business, then I will tell you, put 25% in your business, put 25% in real estate, put 25% car, you know, so I will change it. So it depends on who you are. There is no add and fast rule to that. But for the real estate, make sure you diversify your real estate investment. Is it wise or somewhat appropriate to save money in cash at home? Probably in a safe or a secret place at home. Oh, yes, you need to have cash at hand. But it shouldn't be too much. But you need to have cash at hand. Things happen where you need fast cash. So yeah, you need to have a safe and have different currencies at home. Yeah, it's, but don't make it public to everybody. I save, but I end up making emergency withdrawal from my savings. How do I prevent it? That's one of the reasons for savings now. So that you can handle emergency. But if every savings is going to emergency, then you need emergency help. <laughs> <laughs> so make sure that you don't save the money in a way that you can easily assess it. So... Thank you, sir. What is your take on full-time ministry as a pastor? And as a full-time pastor, how do you maximize opportunity to create wealth? I'm a full-time pastor now. And I'm not poor. So the question is, what is your definition of full-time pastor? Because you don't go into full-time until your hands are full. So most of what you call full-time pastor is laziness and religion. You are pastoring 12 people, you say you are doing full-time. How? You will steal or you will lie or you will raise offering that God didn't send you. Because the income of 12 people cannot finance the church and finance you. So you don't go into full time until your hands are full. So to say you are in full time ministry, the real definition of full time ministry, contrary to all the lies they have told you before now, full time ministry means that ministry should be your primary assignment, not your only assignment. So I'm primarily a pastor. So I'm a full time pastor. But I'm secondarily a businessman, secondarily an investor. So it doesn't disturb my anointing, it doesn't disturb anything. Hello, are you not getting blessed now? Am I not making money at the backyard? Are you not buying book? I didn't collect any offering from you now. Hey, hey, you came for free seminar, but my money is coming because I have something to sell. If I tell you to give offering, I say they want your money. Hey, I don't want your money, keep your money, but buy your product. You are not doing me a favor buying my book. I'm doing you a favor giving you knowledge. So you can, I can be arrogant about it because I didn't ask you for offering. And it's free seminar that you came for. Hello? Do you understand now? So as a pastor, offer value. Money flows in exchange for value. Money flows in exchange for goods and services. You cannot reduce your life to waiting for people to start an offering to survive. That's a low level of oppression. So as a pastor, what can you do with your gift? My gift is in the book. My gift is in CD. My gift is in seminar. I host seminar. I charge people. They pay. So discover things you can do and monetize your gift. Monetize your gift and let it be a blessing to you. What is one character trait or top three that has been the game changer in your world's creation journey? It's very simple. Number one, financial intelligence. I'm forever learning. I'm forever learning. Number two, financial planning. I plan. I strategize. And number three, financial discipline. I'm very disciplined to make sure I practice it and I stick with it. I avoid any form of distraction. I don't, anything anybody will say, let them say. I don't follow fad. I don't follow trend. I don't follow, I just do what I know I should do. Because at the end of the day, nobody will ask you which designer you are wearing when you are a rich man. So all, this is, all those are all poor people's discussion. Hello, I, I can wear myself. <laughs> <laughs> so what is your take on the youth traveling abroad as the only option of making it in life? Well, there's nothing wrong in traveling if it's the plan of God for your life or your desire in life. But when you want to travel, do it the right way and make sure you factor in all the things that are important. I did a series last two years ago October 2022. It's called Before You Join the Jackpot Bandwagon, part one to five, no, part one to six. 
I did part one to five, then I did Jackpa versus Jackpa Da. And then I did Jackpa Love. So it's part one to six. Go to my YouTube channel, you see it there. So all these young people traveling, there's nothing wrong. It's just that they will go and suffer and they will learn by experience what they refuse to learn by revelation. Because the grass is not greener on the other side. People are in Canada now committing suicide, and London, America committing suicide. Marriages are dying. People are frustrated. They are lonely. They have a mental problem. They are too ashamed to come back home because they don't even have money to transport them to their home because they have sold everything to go. So before you join that bandwagon, think very well because what you are looking for can be done here. How can the church in Ghana begin to shift their paradigm with regards to wealth creation? Hey, you see, it's not only in Ghana, it's everywhere. The only problem is that Ghana own is more because of this prophetic nonsense that is happening. We have genuine prophet, no doubt. I operate in the prophetic, so I'm not against the prophetic. But many of what people are doing, you are just playing games. You are just on serious people. It's like, when you are, it's like children playing in the field. So all this prophetic Monday to Friday, prophetic, you know, no teaching, no maturity, no discipleship. You will do all those things. When you get to your 40s and you look back at your life, you discover that for the past 18 years, you have just been playing games. So what I will tell you is, if you are called as a pastor, Look, when we started out in the 80s, many of you don't know that what the Messiah that people are seeing today, he was, they were doing prophetic and prayer in those days. Oh. You don't know that Messiah Otabi too, you, they used to prophesy in the 80s and the 90s. God just helped him to quickly notice that, hmm, this thing. But today now, the guy stayed on teaching, stayed true to his thing. Look at the ministry today. Ajina Sare used to do crusade. In those days, they would be doing miracles, doing rah, 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 in the 80s, in the 90s. When I came in 1992, I came for a meeting with Ajina Sari, with Maurice Aulo that we did here. In 1992, I was working for Maurice Aulo. But these guys stayed true to teaching, stayed true to teaching. They are still alive. But there are people that used to prophesy then. They are nowhere to be found now. Many of them have entered into sorcery. They have entered into all kinds of things. So there is nothing wrong in the prophetic. There is nothing wrong. But that's not the whole gospel. So everybody that wants to do this, so every church should make sure that they focus on the full gospel to build people holistically. And when you build an holistic group of people, it will help them. So if you are a pastor, focus on teaching and then recognize that you are asking people to bring 10%, but you are not giving the same passion to tell them what to do with the remaining 90%. Give the same passion to teaching world creation. Because the continent right now needs help. And the deliverance we need now is mental deliverance. So, that's what I will advise. Number three, what can we do as a church to mentor the next generation to liberate the African continent from? Same thing, just have a strategy and stick to it. Is taking a loan to invest right in scripture and in business-wise? What's the right interpretation of the 2015 says you shall lend, but you shall not borrow? Okay. Now, there's nothing wrong in taking a loan. The same Bible says borrow, empty vessels, not a few. So, let me help you with Jesus. Triumphant entry into Jerusalem. The donkey that Jesus used. Was he bought, stolen, or borrowed? Borrowed. The Lost Supper that was done at the upper room chamber. The chamber where they did the Lost Supper. Was he bought, stolen, or borrowed? The boat of Peter that Jesus used to preach. Was this bought, stolen, or borrowed? So, who do you want to believe? If Jesus borrowed, who are you? <laughs> you see, many of you are just plain religious. You don't read Bible. You just listen to all these men of God. That they, I hope you know that over 80% of men of God did not go to Bible school. You see, the church is very terrible. A, somebody will just claim that they heard the voice that nobody heard. Only them heard the voice. And before you know it, they start. Where two or three are gathered. And all of you will submit your life to a charlatan. Can you be, by doctor lady, can you be a medical doctor without going to medical school? No. After going to school, you still go to medical school. And after you go to medical school, you still need to be recertified over and over again. Can you be a lawyer without going? But to be a pastor, just say God call you. That's all. Nobody heard, only you. Even your wife didn't hear the call. So we have to be careful. Read the Bible for yourself and stop all this nonsense. Hello? Read the Bible 
for yourself. The Bible says, Oh, no man, nothing but love. So you owe everybody love because with this, all men know that you are my disciple if you have love one for another. So there is nothing wrong in borrowing for business. We have spoken about this for good debt. Because, let me have, ask you a question. If you are given a contract now to build an airport, and the airport is $52 million to build, and they gave you the contract, and they gave you 30% mobilization fee, so they gave you $18 million to go and start, where will you see the money to finish it? So many of you just talk out of religion without understanding because you are just grassroots players. And you have to be careful for this social media ranting when you just have you know, 20 Ghana CD uh, airtime. You are just making noise on social media, talking rubbish. Then, um, oh no man, uh, what's that on? Uh, you shall lend to many nations, you shall not borrow. He's telling you the possibility that is available for you as a believer. That you, come, you can come into a realm in your life where you have enough that you can begin to lend to people that you will not be in a position where you need to borrow to survive. He's not talking about good debt, where you need to borrow to survive, borrow to eat. But when he says you shall lend to nations, think well, because you see, many of us don't have analytical thinking. That's why people think that we just go to church, we are senseless. The God says you shall lend to nations. How can he say you will lend to people and be against borrowing? The people you are lending to, are they not borrowing from you? So, he said go and borrow people and he's against borrowing. That means he's telling you to do something wrong. Are you not thinking? You just read Bible, you just start all this religious nonsense. Let's move on. Please, what would you consider as a five top opportunities that Ghanaians aren't taking good advantage of as far as, far as career people in their late 20s? Please. Please. I don't know this. Eat to health sector. Okay. I should relate to health sector. Okay. Now, please, listen and listen well. In the world that we live in today, we have entered into a world of technology. So anything you are doing now, technology must be involved. Technology must be involved. So a lot of people that are trying to build a career are building a career in a field that is going extinct. In a field that is not... So when people like... Uh, young lady now that is a medical doctor, people want to be lawyers, they want to be, all those careers are expiring. To say you are going to be, do medicine now, it's like you are going to waste your life. You know why? As we go forward with AI, with technology, you don't need people to be medical doctors anymore. Machines can become medical doctors. Robots can become medical doctors. And they don't go on strike. They don't earn salary. They don't come late to work. They don't have monthly cycle. They don't fight each other. So they are better staff and workforce than human beings. So in the future, if we needed 5 billion doctors before, we now need 500,000. So it means that many of you will become doctors. You'll be jobless and you'll be doing things below your capacity. You'll become, so anything that your parents did, stop it. Doctor, lawyer, engineer, farmer, all those courses are now useless courses going forward. Because technology is replacing it. Doesn't mean that there will not be people doing it, but it will be fewer. And it will be more in developing countries. In developed countries, you will discover that those things are not there. Right now, there are machines that can diagnose you and they will tell you everything about your life from top, from your head, everything. They will print it out like this in less than 30 minutes. Just, you just put your hand there like this. And there are, you can sit down in Nigeria. And a machine in India can do operation for you in Nigeria. Yes. <laughs> so there are all kinds of things. So what I will tell you is technology. Those of you that want to run away and do relocation, you don't need to relocate. You can sit down here and do remote work. And you'll be earning dollars in Ghana. So let me, because the person mentioned young people, let me give you a few. So go to remote.com remotely.com freelancer.com so remote.com remotely.com freelancer.com go to ggiinsights.com that's g i g i insights.com go to those four websites you will see millions and hundreds of jobs available for you anywhere in the world 
and you'll be earning salary in dollars without leaving your country. Now, don't forget, the world is a 24-hour economy. Africa is a 12-hour economy. So in most parts of Africa, we don't work for 24 hours. But many developed nations are a 24-hour economy. So you can work in Ghana, and when you close by 5, you get home by 7. And then you start another work, you resume another work by 7 p.m. Till 12 midnight, and you sleep. Or you get home by 7, you sleep, you wake up by 12 midnight, and you walk to 4 a.m., sleep again. So there, there, there is so much opportunity. So what I will say is technology. Anything technology. Study it. Even in the field where you are, what are the technological aspects of those fields? What are the future aspects of those fields? That's what you should be focusing on. If I buy books, I don't read them. Why? You don't have enough why to read them. Yeah, you don't have enough why to read them. So, it's not a demon. Your why is not strong enough. When you have enough why, you will read them. So, while you can pray, I can tell you to pray in the spirit, I can tell you to do all kinds of stuff, you don't have enough, re enough strong reason. That's why. So, I will advise you, let me give you strategies. Strategies to do is, that book that you are not reading, put it on your toilet. So, use the toilet revelation. Put it on your toilet. Everybody goes to the toilet at least once a day. So every time you are on the toilet, whether you are doing major or minor, read the one you can read. <laughs> and once you are done, put it back there. Continue tomorrow. In one month, you will finish it. Number two, do audiobooks. Go more into audiobook and be listening to it. But if you are doing audiobook, you have to listen to it at least seven times. By the time you listen to it over and over again, then it becomes, because listening when you are reading, is a level. When you are listening, is another level. When you are seeing, is another level. So, in the realm of education, the, the things that stick more are the things that activate your reading, hearing, and seeing faculty. So, one of the things that can help you to activate those three when you are reading book is to read aloud. So when you want to read a book now, for instance, um, okay, can I have your book, please? So now, please, when you open this book now, and you are doing this, you are reading, you are also seeing, but you are not hearing. So when you are talking, you can't be talking and fall asleep. You can't fall asleep talking. You understand? So, to activate other faculty that will help you, when you are now in that toilet, you now do like this. Poverty defined. There are five definitions of poverty as stated in my book, Pathway to Wealth. But they will only be mentioned here. Poverty is a state of lack and hazard. Now, what am I doing? I'm reading, I'm seeing, and I'm speaking. And as I'm speaking, I'm hearing my voice. Now, listen. Many of you don't understand. This, what I'm telling you is how, because you, you have to understand what we call human behavioral science to understand the way your neurological system operates. These are the psychology of human beings. You see, when you are speaking and you are hearing yourself, reading aloud, the voice you are hearing is not the voice that is speaking. You don't, it's a mystery. But by the time you record it and listen, you say, ah, is that my voice? Because what you are hearing is different from what you will now hear when it's recorded. That's to show you that by the time you are reading, it's recorded. And that's, what is, that's why when you are now reading, and that's thing you can do is to have a pen and begin to mark and underline and take notes. You see, as you add your hand to it, you have entered the fourth dimension. Because everything you use your hand to mark is inscribed on your subconscious mind. When you need to recall it, you will see the exact page, the exact line, it will come back to you. 
It's called memory recall. That's the way your mind works. Because you see, your mind has three windows. It has the memory window, the contemplation window, and the imagination window. When you open the memory, you can replay the past. When you open the contemplation, you can think analytically and make reasonable decisions. When you open the imagination window, you can dream, fantasize, and come back and decide to go there. Do you get it now? And that's the way the prophetic works. So the prophetic is now, I've told you what happens in the mind. So you have three windows. Now in your spirit, there is a spiritual window. The prophetic is opening the spiritual window to receive divine signals that you can now communicate to somebody physically. Okay, so let me do a practical. Give me that book. No, your notes. Now, I want you to read. Stand up and read what you wrote. Just read anything that you wrote. Let me show you how the prophetic works. But now, we're looking at it from the spiritual window. So, just read out what you wrote. Anything, read it out. Okay, so give me the book now. Now... Okay, continue reading. You can read. You can see. Now, please listen. When it was in, she's the one that wrote it. When it was in front of her, she was reading it. When I took it away from her, she said she can't read. Why? Because she said she cannot see. But if she memorized it, she can recite it without seeing the book. Now, let's do something. Now, look at me. Now, I want you to go to your room now. Your room now. You can see your bed. You can see the curtain. You see those, that shoe rack, and there are some things on it. Now, now, listen. No, no, no. I'm just showing you how the prophetic was. So, I just, now, she's here now. She cannot see a book in front of her. But when I told her, go to your room, she stopped seeing. She started, she went into the inner eye. So, she opened a new portal called the mind, and she saw her room. But she's not seeing the room with her physical eyes. She's seeing it with the eyes of her mind. That the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened. But now, I am not in that room. But I can now open a spiritual portal, look into her eyes, and make a connection spiritually. Just like your phone makes a connection. I can now look at her and be seen. So I can now look at her, and then if God wants me to say something about her, God can tell me her name. And I can see your name is, and then we, and all of you will be excited. But that's not your business. It doesn't change. Do you understand? So it's just to understand the way these things work. That any, every one of you can operate in the supernatural. But it's because you don't want to serve God, you don't want to pray, you don't want to fast, you don't want to be holy, you don't want to stay. You now begin to get yourself into stuff. What advice will you give an investor who is interested in government instruments like bonds, shares, or fixed deposits? that seem very volatile with current political challenge. Now, please listen. If you are buying anything from government, the interest is low and it is fixed. So, bonds fail. Government bonds have failed. Government treasury bills have failed because government can fail. But it is still one of the most secure investments because it's government. It's just that the return is low. So, don't say because it can fail, you will not do it. Because like I said, even if you hold the money, the money is failing in your hand. So I will advise that you do it. So there's nothing wrong in doing it. Okay, if I buy books, okay, I've settled that. Can you help me to manage my time well? Um, please teach me to cultivate a disciplined life. Please deliver me from social media addiction. Okay. <laughs> no, don't laugh. The person is seeking for help. So now, let me go back to, so we set to the issue of books. Um, to have a disciplined life, you need mentors and accountability partners. I don't live here with you, and I'm not close to you. So you, this thing you are asking now, gather your friends together. Brother, sister, uncle, cousin, and tell them, look, I need to did you, please ask me. Have you read your Bible today? Ask me. Have you done this? So put people around you that will help you. Then for the social media, you can actually program your social media to deactivate and tell you how long you have spent. So if you're on Instagram now, you can program Instagram to say, okay, after one hour, it should just, there's a way, so you can do all that now. So you can use all those technology to, after one hour, the thing will just lock you out. And then 
it will come back. So you, you can do all that. And then you can actually go off social media completely. So what I will advise you to do is to go and buy a dumb phone. You know it's because you bought a smartphone. That's why you are no more smart. <laughs> so buy a dumb phone. The one that cannot do WhatsApp, that cannot do anything. <laughs> so you now have that SIM card. You put it inside that one. So when you want to go off social media, you go off it for as long. Then when you want to go back, what do you do? You carry the SIM card, you put it back in the phone, and you continue again. So the same way we are fasted in January now, you can fast social media and say, okay, for one month, I'm off social media. So that's the way. So you have to be disciplined by doing things that will help you to stay disciplined. Are you blessed? Let's give thanks to God. I want to pray for you. I wanted to just thank him for today. I'm going to just lift up our voice and thank him. Just appreciate him for the opportunity we have. Give him glory. Give him praise. Thank him. Open your mouth and pray that God will grant you the grace to apply everything you have heard here today. That you will not just be a hearer, but you become a doer. Open your mouth and pray that the Lord will surround you with the right people this year and make things easy for you. Pray for wisdom to rise above confusion. That this year you will not be confused. Now pray for favor to produce results. That the Lord will favor you this year. That we had favor to your labor. And this year you will not labor in vain. Pray that the Lord will send help into your life. And by the end of this year, you'll be a better version of yourself. Now I pray that God will make you a testimony of this encounter. A testimony of this encounter. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I want you to stretch forth the two of your hands towards me as I pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for everyone that you have brought into this meeting today. Lord, I pray for these ones that their heavens will be opened this year. Lord, I pray that you will bless the works of their hands. I pray that you will surround them with the right people and make things easy for them. I pray that this year you will settle them. You will favor them. You will honor them. Lord, I declare and decree that whatever is fighting the works of their hand will cease oppression in the name of Jesus. Lord, let these hands prosper. Let these hands do well. Lord, I pray that the kind of money they have never handled before, they will handle it. The kind of resources they have never handled before, they will handle it. That this year they will pay tithes like never before. They will give like never before. They will prosper like never before. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I cover everyone with the blood of Jesus. I declare that there shall be no loss. In the name of Jesus. As you step out of this place, grow, flourish, blues up, do well, prosper. In the name of Jesus. I cover you with the blood of Jesus. And I declare there shall be no loss. This will be your best year yet. This is a leap year. Every four years we experience it. Whatever the last four years has not delivered to you, may this year hand it over to you. May you experience giant lips this year. May you experience quantum lips this year. In the name of Jesus. I pray that from today you will love what God loves. You will hate what God hates. You will walk in the spirit. You will live by faith. You will press and be a carrier of his presence. You will carry glory. You will carry power. You will carry fire. 
and you carry his presence thank you father in jesus mighty name of prayer amen amen and amen god bless you um our office is in kaswa if you need any of the books for yourself your family you can go to the back there get the office phone number from godwin